No, I understand. It was wise of you to bring them here, Count. They'll receive the best treatment in all of Ustalon. Early signs of bleaching. This is the response to stimulus. An Iron Fang veteran? Hmm. Ah, oh, I think I recognize this one. Her eyes betray much. Now, for their admission records, may I have their names? Last week, we continued our adventure with the group of our... I was going to say unlikely heroes, but we don't know. We still don't know who you are. Through your attempts to survive this situation in Friarstone Asylum, you've simply been thrust into. But last week, we only followed the adventures of four of you. There is one story we had not touched on. Cammy, as you were making your way down that hall trying to find some token to parlay with these survivors back at the barricade to prove that you are who you claim to be. That is really just not face shifters is pretty much the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, took a little nap. You fell asleep. It came on very suddenly. It came from nowhere. And you didn't even feel it coming. You didn't feel it beginning. You were simply in that hallway, and then you were waking up on a cool dirt floor. Worked, packed earth beneath you. Breeze blowing across your body. The smell of death and decay from the asylum gone entirely from your senses. But replaced by just an ancient Headed rot. Like crops left too long to spoil. As you open your eyes and pick your head up and look around, you saw that you seem to be on a small road amongst a pair of flagging farms that have certainly seen better days. What crops they may once have grown have long since been gone, but strangely, the field does still seem turned, the earth tilled. There is a barn and a home at the edge of each of these, a pair of barns for one of them, quite large, so they look to be run down and in relatively poor state of repair. The lights flickering inside show that they are not as abandoned as they seem. And as you looked around further, you saw you were on the very outskirts of a much, much larger settlement that you don't recognize at all. These farmsteads, these hovels, these wooden shelters on the outskirts give way to an impressive stone skyline some way in the distance of tall, rich buildings Manor houses, businesses, banks, stories, high. The center of this sprawling city clearly filled with life, at least it should be. But again, the buildings look to be in various states of decay, but they are clearly not abandoned. There are lights and windows, glass is cleaned, in some places, panes that have been broken, you can see have clearly been replaced and you can see the movement of people going about their days as if nothing was wrong. Um, I think that Cammy would get out of the road, um, <laughs> kind of dust herself off a little bit, uh, looking around, uh, 
it kind of like quietly to herself. Was that one the dream or was the one before? Or is it now? You would hear a loud bong of a church bell emanate throughout the city. You see a little off to the side of this stone nexus of wealth at the center of this town, a tall clock tower standing amidst the city, several stories taller than the rest of the buildings around it. A single note emanates out from its peak. You can see up at its top, almost as if a lined set atop this clock tower, pale yellow full moon hanging in the sky. This is not the fishing village that you had dreamed of before or visited. There is no smell of salt. There is no lapping water. The land gives way to rolling fields and mountains around it, all looking as forgotten and decrepit as the town city itself. But still, that image, a tower tall in the distance, the moon directly above it, a pale yellow mist rolling in from the tree line behind still matches the same. <laughs> Kimmy, um, as she's like slowly taking it in, her eyes widening with realization. I do remember that. And she's going to start running as fast as she can from the mist. Your flight takes you into this city, past these farms, past these uh, small, almost independent outlying settlements built around their own small circles and intersections of roads and towards the looming stone at its center. But as fast as you run, as fast as your tiny little legs can carry you, this mist rolls in from behind, from the sides, and as you approach the city, you can see emanating out from the streets and the alleys itself. And regardless of what you try to do, how you try to run or hide, the result is much the same as what had happened before. Standing in that road, leading through a gate amongst the walls to the center of this city, a lone figure. What looks almost like a man drawn about in yellow, tattered strips of cloth bound around his body, his eyes, his arms, one hand sporting the spiked, jagged razor. The mist is behind you. He is ahead. And there is nowhere else to go. Straight to ten. No, it's straight to <laughs> Immediately. Just reach over his whole thing. Do not pass go. Do not collect your dollars. As you awaken from this nightmare here to something admittedly not much better. This cycle continuing, you open your eyes to see the same rumbling basement where you had first awoken the sounds of screams of that man being tortured on the table. But this time, it is the gentle murmur of quiet conversation. Voices you recognize and one that you don't. You awaken once again in the basement of Briarstone Asylum. With all of your newfound allies here, having awoken some time prior, uh, preparing themselves how they can for their moments, uh, for their morning, sharpening your weapons and with whatever you can find available, be it against another piece of metal, these hefty tools that you found in this furnace, adjusting these metal plates and pipes that a few of you have wrought around yourselves in lieu of proper armor. You have readied as well as you can. And you hear a voice that you don't recognize. Well, a little bit, but this conversational voice is a fair cry from the hor horrified, agonized screaming you'd heard before man from the table is sitting amongst your allies here with the little metal well, little metal scalpels that have been on the table that 
that face shifter has been using to cut into him in the first place and doing his best to look in his reflection on the edge of a metal cabinet and just trying to shave up what he can inside his face. Um, I emerge from whatever covers or <laughs> holding the, the cocoon. Probably hella swaddled. Yes. <laughs> Very I, blanketed. Yes. I just stuck my head out. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. Ha-ha! <laughs> April Fools! Fools! We thought we, that there were... Yeah, <laughs> we pranked you! We got you so good! We, we pranked you with our with our computer crashing! It's okay! Uh, welcome back, sorry about that. Next thing, uh, <laughs> next thing the mixer starts smoking. No, with all you, no, oh, don't yeah. curse us, don't curse us. <laughs> hey, we haven't had any tech issues in a while. We've been doing pretty good. We've been on a good run! That's the first thing yeah, we do with yeah. Johns. We're, we're vibing, we're vibing. We had anyway. to build up to a big one. Yeah, we had to build up to like an actual crash. Anyway, um, you had woken up. You had seen the man from the table. I believe <laughs> literally you said, oh my gosh, and the stream crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great setup, honestly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Which gets surprised. <laughs> Things <laughs> happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, hold on. <laughs> Everybody stops. Stop. <laughs> well, she, uh, she calls out, uh, oh my gosh, the guy kind of like, starts the throttles and looks over and stop. Oh, dang it. Hey. You Good look a lot him. better. You, I, I thought that we like messed up that uh, surgery. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. We look better at this than we yeah, thought. Uh, the potion helped a lot, but. Oh, uh, what? No. <laughs> well, it's good to see you're awake. <laughs> good to know you're not dead. Oh no, I just got sleepy. <laughs> my my yeah, you're buried. peeking out like cheeks pressed in the in you the You've been real sleepy, it seems. Uh, well, first I've heard from you since well, since they brought you down here. And it sounds like you were out for quite some time before that too. Oh. What was I? Yeah, a few hours at least. No. Oh. And then we slept. Oh, this is a little well, nap. Names, uh, oh, you were down here for two, three hours before you started settling down, slept for eight or nine, and she was unconscious when you brought her here in the first place, so you've been out for probably at least 10, 12 hours, sounds like. Un unconscious or, or sleeping? I mean... <laughs> Both? Yeah, you sure yeah, <laughs> through a battle with a face stealer. Well, I've always been a deep sleeper, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, sure, you sure wasn't waking up. Yeah. Uh, Compra, pleasure to finally meet you. Nice, uh, nice to meet you. Copper, you said? Uh, Compra. Compra. Not like the metal. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's Andorin. It's uh, a lot of people have trouble with it. Oh. But uh, don't worry about it. You can honestly call me whatever you want after what you did for me. I well, wouldn't be here were not for you guys. I haven't had a chance to thank you properly. But, oh. well, good to see you're alive. Ah, yeah, likewise to you. You are my first successful surgery that I remember. So, oh, well. <laughs> it is a big moment for me. Hey, <laughs> High didn't five. Do, didn't do too bad, yeah. honestly. Oh, it's certainly a lot better than what uh, Lacey was putting on me. So, mm. yeah, I'll take what I can get. Lacey? That's the first face thing we found. Oh, she has a name? Have well, the oh, she woman she looked like did. I was uh, oh. telling your friends here, she, <laughs> I'm maintenance. I don't really speak with the patients once much, but uh, I, everyone knew a Lacey. I was up fixing the heat in her office once. I uh, left a wrench a little too close to where she can get it. And the thing flew just a hair past the side of my head. Uh, yeah, for some, rep some reputations are earned, I suppose. <laughs> Wait, she was staff? I thought she was a patient. No, she was a patient. Okay. I was fixing it. Not her office. Her, her office. Uh, What do they call them? The room? I don't know. Little, I don't know. Room? I just fixed the heat. Okay. <laughs> Lady, I don't know none of the big smart words. I ain't, I ain't Lissandro. I, just... I don't know how to name all these things. <laughs> did, yeah. you, did you ever see me? Because they said I, I was a patient. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I um, actually, you, you are a patient. Oh, yeah. Apparently, you're what they are calling a Bleachling. Yeah, apparently you're oh, like, what? you're dying and you're dying. Like, you're e -Y -I -I I'm dying? And well, that's not D Y I E I N G. That's not your natural hair color. Oh, T N T N. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about that. They told me bleach, and I figured you had a problem with your laundry, but I guess it means something else when it comes to gnomes. Oh. I have no idea. I, um, is it serious? I mean, from what I was told, it ends in death, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. I'd be a question for the doctors if we could find them. I would love to do that if I am. Hey, look, you said some of them still upstairs. Your friends tell me some of them still upstairs. Uh, yeah. we've got like, one more one phase friend? dealer. I know you don't. They, like, we got two phase dealers. They're not gonna let us. Do you think there's nothing else we could get some? Them. I don't know. They got. They must have food if they're still up there. Yeah, we have to kill another phase dealer. Ooh. Well, uh, hey, if I ain't getting I... taken by one of them, well, God's gonna take me just from an empty stomach. <sighs> We at least have to introduce him. He's a new face, and they're not going to like it. Yeah. And I know they, they tell me the hunger is the one you feel, but the thirst is twice as bad. I don't think I've ate or drank nothing in at least a day or two. Just you guys don't look like you have much. Liquid supplies down here and maintenance. Unless, you, unless he's looking to drink oil. I'm yeah, a, not a whole lot That's we can help out with here. can brave the rain outside if you're interested. I mean, I take rainwater at this point. Hell, I ain't gonna turn my no nose up to nothing. I'm about a few steps around about taking a page out of one of them survival guys' manuals if I gotta. <laughs> I don't wanna, but. I mean, the, the boiler room probably has water pipes if it boils stuff. It's got overflow valves. Yeah. We should be able to. Uh, if we, get a, we can grab a pan or a bucket or something and be able to just catch some drinkable out of there. I don't know how potable it's necessarily to be, but, you know, it was no better than nothing. Yeah. Probably put rainwater over that, but hey, uh, we'll see what we see. We could also boil it in the boiling room. And then it'll be cleaner. You want to drink it hot? No, I think we need to cool down. But just to clean it. Clean it. How's boiling it going to make it clean? Probably, I don't know. Kills all the stuff that's. I'm just thinking. There's you also weird be... sorts, that's for sure, but. There's not going to be anything like that in water in the pipes. Uh, well, talking about it down here ain't gonna help nothing for us. Unless we're on to dig into a uh, pile in the other room. I've already done my fair share of digging in there. Well, I ain't too inclined to join you. He said he came down the cold suit. So well, up we go, I guess. Group you. Back on up. And we're taking the. <laughs> we already took it. And as you uh, as you go to, to stand and move, Cammy, you feel hug on just a little bit of your hair <laughs> on the side of your head. And you look down and see you just like Okay. Um <laughs> all right. Uh I take him and I, I set him on the ground in front of me. I'm like, yeah, okay. You, you set him down, he like reaches. Uh, focus closer. really hard. Oh sorry, I I get, I get closer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Touch, touch. Go ahead. No, give it to me. You, what you, are you? You're gonna go. You're gonna like within reach. He wants yes. You, fingers. You get down, and he opens both of his uh, little mitten hands up wide, and just puts them uh, right uh, over your eyes. Okay. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> and immediately, she's like, she has this reaction for a moment, and then both of her eyes roll back. No. <laughs> uh, not again, man. <laughs> yeah. Chameleons. <laughs> Are you what knocked her out? <laughs> and immediately, you guys are all like confused. Oh, oh. <laughs> steps over and just slaps this lizard off her face. <laughs> and as oh you slap God. this chameleon, Flings it off and it kind of tumbles across the sky a little bit. Oh, get you, little varmint! What the hell? She's gonna let him do that? Uh, she just woke up. Wait, wait. <laughs> Go over to the chameleon, pick him up, and put him back on. You, you. Oh, <laughs> he, you, you broke her. You fix her. Pardon? I, it's her. I don't. I don't know. It's a weird connection. Am I still passed out? <laughs> <laughs> the chameleon. You like. Move a little bit when the chameleon gets slapped off you, and then MD puts it back in your face. You just <laughs> <laughs> the, the the reptile's smarter than any of us. The chameleon turns towards Capri's. 
call it a morbid curiosity, but I want to see what it can do. I, yeah. I don't. Oh I don't. God. I don't think it it's likes you. It's not gonna hurt her from looking. It looks at like you. it's hurting her. She's I'm just on the ground drooling, just yeah. <laughs> whispering. <laughs> There's a lot of weird stuff that's been happening. What all the gods you mean? It don't look like it's hurting her. Is Are you she... seeing different things here? She's not screaming in pain. Uh, uh, last time she got like information from like she was able to be more. Oh my God. <laughs> Every time this thing touches her like this, we learn something new. Well, they seem to be friends. When he's... she's awake, they're like buddies. At this point, so... her just passing gal is par for course. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just, uh, is this any <coughs> any weirder than I don't know face stealer? At least it's like, well, I guess it bad. ain't. But I, I, I just I get her. I guess I'm beyond asking questions at this point. Then I, I mean, don't. It's not like we know. But. I start getting the swaddle ready. <laughs> the swaddle. <laughs> and as, you, as you go to start the swaddle, the chameleon pulls his hands back and just climbs back down onto the front of her shoulder. And you see Cammy stir and kind of wake up. And you have been on a magical journey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> quite literally. Uh, oh. To prepare your spells yes. for the morning. As a witch, your spells are quite literally sourced from that lizard. Oh, it's all That <laughs> is the direct font of your power. Oh, and gosh. With his communion... You can pick two of the first level spells you have in your little spell card deck there because you, fortunately, have a conduit that immediately gives you access to the things that you know. You can pick two of them to have readied for the day. It can be the same one twice or it can okay. be two different spells. Um, and you can sort through that, uh, figure out what it is that you want. But Cammy comes to... Like so, so just to confirm, oh. you, you're okay and that's supposed to happen. How long was I out? Oh my gosh. Not, not hours this time. A couple like, minutes. Like a, a minute, minute, maybe. Or something. I feel like I could be years older. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm fine. Okay. Good. Yeah. No, I'm doing okay. What? I'm stink definition of fine. I'm going to go back to the tool cabinet while this is like she's awake okay cool she's alive i'm gonna go back to the tool cabinet and start rummaging for like screwdrivers and hammers and small things for stabbing and throwing plenty of various little yeah. implements like that that wouldn't be an issue uh but compra just shrugs uh, my mistake i suppose uh he sort of looks down at the lizard but i'm sorry <laughs> Oh, what'd you do to tick him off, dude? Just, him. <laughs> what? Well, he just touched your face and you passed out. It seemed like a reason. This guy's all I have. Dude. I'm sorry. Look, I just we seemed don't... Like reasonable. I can't the believe lizard. I'm having to defend this the decision. Lizard, the lizard might not forgive you, but it's reasonable. Your reaction was reasonable. I feel like my eyes are kind of stuck together. His hands are real slimy. <laughs> when was the last time you washed them? His hands? Him. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have water. <laughs> we have rain. Yeah, I think I got a couple of priorities above a change of clothes, but I'd be lying if I said that weren't on the list somewhere. <sighs> I guess let's get out of here and we'll see what the if it's raining in the courtyard. Fantastic. Um, and he comes over to MD in the cupboard and grabs a couple of small little metal pails. Well, at least we can get something drinkable hopefully cool i'll grab another one all right well up we go nothing for it i suppose oh, i'd recommend you hold your nose oh <sighs> so we're just gonna go get some water oh we're gonna leave the basement again oh. we'll go find another face stiller okay maybe get some water okay the, well, the, well, the, no because no, like oh. on that subject i just hold on because i we had a little conversation um let me just uh can i see that real quick uh and i go and i spit but <laughs> that spit turns into it like slowly creates a little whirlpool that begins to swirl and swirl and get bigger until it fills the whole bucket i have created water <laughs> <laughs> just holding the bucket it's looking two at gallons 
Uh, and I wipe my mouth. I'm like, there we go. I, just, I can do that now. <laughs> I just take a sip. Yep, it's clean water. Okay. Doesn't taste like spit. Oh, God, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's, that's certainly yeah. something. I well, we got to put it in you. But why? Are you thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you spit. And now it's... You're going to question... It's magic. <laughs> Listen, Trey, you're going to question the spit water, but not the lizard that makes her pass out. The lizard made the water. There's been a lot of her passing out. The lizard's not even Here. the main cause. I'm like so magic, guys. <laughs> so you you can do that, but you ain't got nothing that can just, you know, uh, magic door us the hell out of here. You put us somewhere else. I look at, I look at my lizard. <laughs> <laughs> can we do that? Maybe if you didn't slap the lizard, we could have had that one. Maybe this is what we Oh, got. hey. Yeah. Well, hey. well, maybe you if you didn't <laughs> slap the lizard. Well, I'm sorry to slap I don't know how the it lizard, but I didn't think he was about to give you the power to <laughs> spit three buckets of clean water. Don't out. give me your apologize. You got to talk to this guy. Uh, Do you have a name for him yet? Well, I was just kind of calling him Blue right now. Blue. But um, I'm sure that if he has a name, that he knows it. So. Mm hmm. If we tried out a bunch, he might respond eventually, but I'm pretty sure he's the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> Try it. Try. Whoa. <laughs> Try. I'm going to call you Mittens. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Two for yes, one for no. <laughs> yes. Triangle. S small, smaller triangle. <laughs> <laughs> together I'm it's a bigger sorry. one <laughs> oh, together straw <laughs> this oh. poor lizard probably knows exactly what we need to do to answer to everything oh. Clearly trying to tell you something. <laughs> closing? Is something closing? No. Touch his hand again? Do we need to touch? No. Can we play charades while we walk, please? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. Unless you're about to conjure us up a beautiful banquet, I mean, the water will stop us from dying, but I'm still feeling that non hunger. There's some, like, flasks, like canteens around here, and probably. We got buckets. Okay. Just want some portable. It's like know. a canteen if you know yeah. you need it bad enough. But if you gotta run, it's if, gonna spill she, all over. If she can make water, we we're probably okay if it spills. Like, spilled gotta, water like, would be a real shame. It, it, I yeah, would but, I would probably cry over spilled water. Well, getting yeah, up the cold yeah. suit's gonna be a bit of a difficulty, I imagine. Maybe you should have waited. I was really excited. <laughs> yeah. well, we can just all drink it right now. I mean between what six I, of us here. You know how thirsty I am. I could definitely drink my fair share of that right this second. Help yourself. You don't can do that again, right? Fast. That's just something you can do. I can do I, it I don't probably think again. That I want to run from a face sealer with a stomach full of water. I want to run with a bucket full of water. Idea. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 what thing do you want to do? Yeah. Let's water? drink our fill, take the buckets, lock them in the cage. Well, look, if this that ain't what? a terrible idea, it ain't it's the worst one I've heard. Getting up and down the cold suits of pain, but hell, if it's raining up there, like you said, this is if all a whole do about nothing. Water to the survivors? That they get water when we get in. I mean, but we could show them we have it. They'll just say it's another fake. We don't make them jealous. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's so many chains in that room. We can literally just. Like, oh, up. yeah, we can make like, like well, a pulley I'm gonna thing. Well, I'm going to get to step in and see what Let's the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. I know these fellows, at least some of them, at least if there's some staff up there. So I, you know, That doesn't I, mean I, that I know, I know, I know. They ain't going to believe me. But I, a part of me thinks that if you got someone that does know something, like surely we, there's a common ground somewhere. I get they ain't going to believe me, but there's got to be some kind of way. Regardless, we got a bargaining ship now. Water, not you. Water. Oh, okay. Water. Whoa. <laughs> it's a little scary. We got a we water this spigot here. We'll trade you for some bread. This ain't the first or the fifth time I've had to get in this dang coal suit and clear the thing out, so. 
Well, up we go, I suppose. Hold your yeah. nose. Walk yeah. yeah, you immediately turn to that corner. Ooh. Mm. Oh. No, close your eyes, too. There's something. But you think it smells bad to you, brother. This is awful. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about closing your eyes. I don't want to bust an ankle in this heap here, but do your best not to smell it. Ain't terrible advice. And he uh, gets up and kind of surprisingly deftly, because he looks like he's a fair bit older than possibly any of you. He's, he's maybe in his 50s here. Uh, clambers up and into the bottom of his cold shoe with no difficulty whatsoever. Uh, difficulty climbing over the pile, but once he gets to the base of this, he's just up there like it's, well, like it's his job. Hmm. He makes his way up to the top. The rest of you, uh, fairly easy being able to follow. Who's uh, who is just be coming up behind him? He's he's at the top. He can help someone down. Uh, a tray comes up and. Yeah, we grabbed chains last time to pull each other mm-hmm. up. So I'm, I'm gonna like yeah, do, like right sort of. There work the buckets so that they're like attached to those chains so we can just get them up the chute as well. Even on flat and the angled chute's going to be the difficulty. Oh, the chute's angled? Oh. Yeah, it's like yeah. a oh, water, like a 45 degree, mm. like a slide. Yeah, it is basically like, like a slide. Literally brace yourself on so much slide. We have enough buckets. Can we just like, we, we can... You can get the We can the retroactively work, have put like half of the water in each of the buckets so that the bucket can like. Mm. Um, you don't have to retroactively. You can like use the empty buckets and the full <laughs> buckets to yeah. put half of the water. I mean, yeah, I'm you, saying you if can, we weren't. You can we're smart enough. mechanize <laughs> getting buckets off the cold suit. This <laughs> isn't the problem. This isn't a 20 minute puzzle that we need to solve. We can <laughs> get the buckets off the cold suit. The, the whole story of the logistics of getting a bucket of water off the cold suit. We're getting the box and the chicken and the cat. Can we find the high pot? <laughs> All right, so we have okay, four so half gallon buckets. You have a two yeah. gallon Maybe bucket and a three gallons gallon of water. <laughs> You, you take one stress. You need a one, you need yeah. one gallon of water in the three you gallon bucket. <laughs> hey, I, are you calling for a stress check? If we, if we spill water, I'm stressed. <laughs> Copper gets to the top. Trey comes up easily behind him. Uh, and starts anchoring this chain as you guys are finagling the buckets down at the bottom. <laughs> and he heads over to the door to open it up out into the courtyard. And it says, well, again, we don't need to worry so much about the damn buckets if it's raining, fellas. We're going to have plenty of source. And he pushes the door open to the courtyard and reveals a figure hmm. that is standing on the other side of it simply just waiting. And no sooner does the door open than in a single swipe outwards, a slash and a spray of blood from Campra as a gurgling scream emanate out from his mouth. And he staggers back around facing towards Trey, clutching his chest, horror and pain in his face. Yo, Brian, you damn idiot and collapses on the ground, revealing a humanoid figure wrapped about in yellow strips of cloth. A now blood-soaked, jagged razor in his upraised hand. Behind him, a mist of yellow, so thick you can't even see the wall of the courtyard behind him. Trey, you are here in the room. You're holding this chain. You have the open coal chute in front of you. The rest of the room is completely enclosed. What do what do you do? Still outside? He is on the outside of the doorway. Popping open that chute and jumping back down. Tattered things here. Rest of you, organizing your bucket brigade at the bottom, this tray comes blasting back down this chute, and you hear this scream. Surely the death knell of Campra up above. What do you do? What was that? Well, what happened? He's dead. Hide, get ready, whatever you have to do crashing across the bodies as I come down the chute. Is it a face stealer? What is this? The thing from our dreams. 
I'm going to my cell. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to we grab should, the mall. We should all be in the same set? No. I don't know what the best strategy is. Fight or hide. We don't have a choice. There's nowhere to go and it's up there. We can make a trap with the buckets. We don't have time. <laughs> um, You hear the metal squeak of the cover at the top of the coal chute, followed by a groan of metal and a snap. As those who still at the bottom can see the lid broken and ripped off of the top of the chute, <laughs> revealing an arm and the razor in view at the top. You can see the yellow mist slowly drifting into the room at the top of the chute. Uh, uh, um, he, uh, he's coming, he's coming down. Are we dreaming again? I'm... Is that it? Finding out? I'm definitely I'm gonna going get to the other side of the body pile. When he looks like he's gonna start coming down, I'm gonna put the oil on the mall. I'm gonna push Kami down, throw a body on top of her. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, let me check your file here real quick. <laughs> down in the meat pile! Oh! The safest one. Like, oh! Your nose, your, uh, my nose! That is gonna my worry apologies. you. Don't yeah, have yeah, no, that's I, a good idea. I'm doing it. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> problem. You don't have a nose me. anymore. It's not a problem. Oh, or, uh, MD, make me a deception check. And Cammy, make me a stealth check. You are untrained. Oh. You have no natural 20. Oh. Don't worry Whoa. about the stealth check. Okay. That's not a child under you a What was my stat though? Just untrained, you just have that plus one from your oh, dexterity so modifier. Cool. It's awesome. I love that. You love it for me. You get shoved down this pile. How about instead of a stealth check, you make me a stress check? Oh, uh, come you on. Get shoved down in this pile of bodies. You see this figure at the top of the chute. That's a six. Ah, oh, beans. <laughs> I was doing so good beans. at the start of this episode. And you gain oh. one stress. As you get. Do you. Do you stay? Do you. What do you do? Um, I think I just kind of free. As soon as, like. My, as soon as it all goes dark, when the body, the other bodies go on top of me, I think that uh, Cammy just kind of freezes, trying to like hold her breath, like uh, holding her mouth, so she doesn't make any sound, just completely, just not knowing what to Rest do. You sound like you moved back, the doorway past the corpse pile. Trey has this big maul, the oil in hand, ready at the door. Easy to run start, to his cell. I'm gonna start playing from there, though. <laughs> <laughs> you start playing from inside the safety yeah. cell. Keys. I mean, I have keys, so I guess I'm gonna go lock you in. Yeah. <laughs> Again? <laughs> After you're locking me in, I'm just like, a fellow should face great fear, but with courage, they made it quite clear. If together we fight with all our might, there's nothing we can't persevere. And then inspire courage. <laughs> he gets your inspire courage going, and you all can feel it. It is something. It is fortifying. It steals you a little, but still this underlying absolute dread you cannot shake. As you're locking him in, MD, you threw her under, you hear a something heavy working its way down the coal chute. Thud, clank, slam, as it makes its way down and then crunch. It, and he drops on the pile of bodies. Cammy, you feel the pressure of this heap shift a little. Hear these rattling breaths this thing is taking. It works its way down the pile, seemingly not noticing you. You the other four of you in the room, you're playing. You got your Oils on mallet the, up. The mallet. You put your oil on it. Got it's it ready. ready as you can be. Where's the darkest spot in the room? Is, the, is there the, any darkness? Well, there's in the, the room. backside. There's around the corner where the furnace is. It's pitch black over there. If no one's bringing a light, you have the lantern uh, that Easy had or has, and you have the lantern up in the wall that you would have. Uh, whether or not you left it lit, that's up to you. But is there, around, is there by shame? the furnace, it's is just there, dark. But like, is there any darkness in the room that we're? Yeah, the backside in? of the room. 
like at the, the far end of it, away from the door. How far up, away uh, How big is this room? Either either way, up at the front or at the back are the dark spots because the lantern's okay. kind of in the middle. I'm gonna like I'm gonna go towards the front and do like hide in the shadows. Okay, make me a stealth check. Ow, that was my hand. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> What are you doing? Um, I'm with Trey. I'm just. I pull out a screwdriver and I pull out the club that I've been using to smash everything. I was like, I'm ready to. I don't know what else to do. This is ingrained in me just to fight, so. I'm gonna you yell out of it. Come and get it. Slam the uh, mallet against some bars. I'm trying to be as big and intimidating as I can be. You see it? Not hurrying, slowly step around the corner into view in the doorway. Its eyes just kind of roll across the three of you. Two that are in front and one in the cell to the side. Not seeming to fall immediately on keys as of yet. I will re-roll that because it's not high enough. What was it? It's a nine. I'm a fighter and that's still a 19. Here. But uh, like a 50% chance of rolling lower. Yes, I am dirt. <laughs> 40. 11. That's oh, higher. So that's with 21. 21, that's with your oil potency and everything on 22. there? 22. 22, you're being 22. inspired. 23 if it matters, because I'm blessed. And with the inspiration, the oil, and consuming your bless. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. So that's a power attack. <laughs> you swing this big maul, and with all the force you can muster, just slam it into this thing. Give me your damage. Is that a hit, or is that, that's not that's a, a hit. hit? That's just a hit. Oh, that was gosh. exactly yeah. a hit. With all of those, he just hits it. Bro, this is not good. 10, 13, so 18, 19. 19 points of damage. 19 points of damage from a big two handed maul. You slam into him. The figure of this thing, it is slender. It looks visibly frail. And you see Trey with this huge hit smash it. Ahead of your big old ranch here, or big old mallet. I think it's just like a sledge Big old with an sledge. old wooden handle. Something that might break easy. Almost picks it up and physically throws this thing against the far wall. You hear it hit. You hear the crack of bones as it slaps into the far wall and lands back on its feet. Its head kind of lolling. One arm hanging at an odd angle. And you see it pop its neck back up. Its arm crack and snap back into position. And now being cast across the room is right next to Keys. His attention is elsewhere. Is this your moment or are you hiding? Um, I, just don't, I don't know if I can hit it. So no, I'm not gonna take it yet. Inspiration continues and he steps over towards MD. We're all distracted. We need everyone else to get out of this basement immediately. I'm just going to bring both weapons down on him. All right. Give me your twin faint twin and faint. take a, your bless back from Haven the Oracle there, Trey. I'm going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start off with the club coming down, aiming right for the head. 18 on the die, mm -hmm. so it's a total of a 25. 25 will hit. That's with the... That's with the club. 
No, it's the same with the, the, oh, the plus 20. That plus one's not gonna help yeah, in 25 in range. Um, so, for a total of 11 damage. Yeah, so you clock him, and this time you see his head like, almost crack and sink. It's like you're hitting like a mummified corpse, like a rotted body left forgotten in a tomb for generations. You feel it just crack and mold. Ooh. You see his head almost crush into his own shoulder as you strike him, but he doesn't seem phased in that second swing. And the, as the screwdriver is coming up right between the ribs, that's where I'm aiming for here. Minus four, so it's a total of a 17 to 18 total. Yeah, the, the screwdriver punching up into side hits and just pierces through the wrapping seemingly completely harmlessly. Derp, you get a hero point for Vixel. Put that on the board there. Um, Maybe, no. Oh, sorry. If I may, no, go ahead, absolutely. In, the, in the noise of his double hit, I would like to try and kind of like woken from my paralysis, like just being so afraid, um, hearing MD say, we just need to get out of the basement and listening to him like wail on the sky. And that sound I'd like to try and sneak from the pile up into the coal chute. Okay. Uh, here, you are in the other room. You are away. You're out of his line of sight. There's no roll for this. From here, you can scamper up and start working your way up the chute mm -hmm. out of the situation. I I love the visual image of Easy just like... Right <laughs> it's like in his little cell just watching this happen. It's like a bar with a cage around the stage. Yeah. You can't hurt the performers. Yeah. <laughs> Step out of it. I'm like, I'm not here. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> so you take these two hits, and then again, his neck cracks, his skull back into position. You see where you'd caved it in, just pops right back out like a dent. You. Don't mind me. He looks, he's not looking at you, he's not making eye contact. He's looking clearly at your violin. You like, you like it? And he raises his free hand like he's reaching out towards you. And then you feel his hand Ooh. back on your shoulder. And to all of you, he simply ceases to be <gasps> in front of Trey and MD and steps into the cell behind Easy. Uh. He leans over your shoulder, looking at this violin, and pulls up this razor on the other side of your head. And yeah. as he does, I could stop playing. <laughs> you feel the whole asylum shudder. The floor shakes and rumbles. Or rubble casts itself loose from the ceiling hear the sounds of stones falling around you. Cammy in the chute, you feel the chute starting to shake, and this, this, the, the bodies in the pile behind you settling and toppling around. Can I use that to tumble? Can I, can no. I use the dirt, the oh. dust. The coal. Uh, can I use that shake to tumble out of his grasp? Sure, make me, uh, let me check your file. Do you have your acrobatics? I don't believe you so. don't, but you are trained. Ooh. Oh, you are please. a pretty quick guy. So with that proficiency and your dexterity, you will have a total of a plus six. All right. On your acrobatics. I'm going to roll it again. Because <laughs> it's an eight. Yeah, um, while that's happening, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm okay. heading like directly to the lock because he's really locked in there. With <laughs> you, the you're coming to quickly yeah. frame me <laughs> unlocking the door here. Yes. 17 plus six, uh, 23. 23, you twist out of way just as he flicks this razor across where your throat just was. Uh -huh. He's not really holding you. He just had his hand there. As if he just expected you to accept this. He tilts his head, brings the razor up as the whole building shakes again more violently this time. Uh, you have the key in the lock at this point and it gets jostled like it, it shakes it hard enough that you feel a little bend in this key as you go to twist it. Cammy, you lose your grip in this chute and start sliding backwards. No, no! <laughs> My dexterity help me from the key bending? And at, not like to the point of being oh, broken, okay. just like oh, a little. Okay. And at that point, with the razor up over easy, 
This figure turns his head to the right, just looking at the wall of the cage. Yo! And disappears. Shouting out at wherever he might have gone. Try again and try harder. You won't get us. Get easy out of that cage. I go and check on Cammy. I plop onto the dead bodies again. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. I um, the cage. Yeah, thanks. The this cell. Doesn't help. Can teleport. And no. <laughs> at this point, I'm going up the chute. They're okay. Tom, bro. See, Cammy's at the top of the pile. You climb over her. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. I'm just like sitting on top of her, like, there was an earthquake. The, yes, the buckets yes. of water. The water. <laughs> They probably still. The buckets are certainly toppled at this point. No, oh. dude. I cry. Mission failed. But it'd be really weird and creepy to lick your tears, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh my gosh. In the chat, the dungeon speed run, somehow it gets worse. Five banes across <gasps> no. the what? table. No. I have already this? used my bless. Why you cannot hurt me. This? And then from Taraka, Nebula 315, and Darkheart 985, no, it does <gasps> not. <laughs> and oh, the baby. My. So, <laughs> and what? so everybody is blessed. Blessed again? Wow. Oh. I love the Bless Bane Wars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey. A woe from TNT DMD in the chat has passed. Oh, has Move passed. My... Oh, that, that was. Okay. Woe. I thought it was a new. Okay. <laughs> and then, no. <laughs> oh, wow. Go ahead and mark my stress up by three because I am stressed. <laughs> MD bolts up the coal shoot. Uh, and. Whatever amount of time the rest of you follow getting easy out of his cage, you would be the first to see what is the very, very dead body of Cabra. Now just laying in a thick, bright red pool of his own fresh blood just inside the doorway. The door still hangs open to the courtyard, which now looks much as it did before. No overpowering yellow mist. No blindness, but nothing from this point is going to help him. Oh, this is... is this is real. This is not a dream. That was our first successful surgery. Yeah. It's starting to feel um, difficult to not feel defeated. Like what's the point of fixing people the point is we're not dead yet i mean oh but he is so. yeah we'll put I, um, as much effort as we can and then not ending up like that we put as much effort as we could to fixing him to like bringing him back yeah we did what we could i um, whatever that thing is put his hands together i close his eyes and we have this angel pendant i don't know what it is but i just put it in his hands like i feel like i need to send him off with something He's the first friend we had outside the five of us in this. We could bury him in the courtyard. It's right there. We you can hear, him. as you come up the coal chute, this almost static noise all around you as the trickling rain from the previous day has become a steady and heavy downpour outside. The rain landing hard enough to kick up its own thick, almost mist-like spray but nothing like what Trey had seen to the doorway when he first arrived. Hmm. He would have wanted us to collect the rainwater in buckets. He really wanted to do that. It's true. So I'll set him out. Yeah. All right, then. Let's go figure out what we need to do to find another one of these flesh-stealing freaks. All right, then. We don't have time to cry. Let's go. You step out of the courtyard, MD, and as you do, make me a reflex save. Be my file. You have that, right? I have that. Uh, 23 total. The 23, you step out, and immediately as you feel the rainfall on you, jerk back. It is 
scalding hot. Uh, the rain that's coming down torrentially outside is near boiling. The door is right there, but you're going to either need to be very quick or find some kind of way to protect yourselves. Blankets. Or wait it out. Well, the the rain's on fire. On f- figurative. Um, it burns like it's on fire. You hear it's pretty boiled. A scream of pain from the adjoining hallway, from the direction of the barricade, oh. muffled as it is by the downpour and the door, still audible. I go. Screw the rain. Go. I go. <laughs> yeah. The monster like tear the thing off its hinges. Yes. There's not a cover to the coal chute anymore. Is the cover now upstairs where we're at? So yes. Yeah, so it's just okay. like on the yeah, ground. Yeah. We're gonna grab that and be like, all right, guys, we can get we can get through the rain like one or two at a time. MD and I are taking. Yeah, we're up. MD and Trey. Like, MD yeah. already had a, you had your reflex save. Trey, give me a reflex save. Uh, you're with Cami and Easy and twenty two cover. Twenty two. You're good. 17s do wonders for your reflex save. All right, yeah. I'm going to, we like, I'll go and I'll take Cammy over and then I'll come back and I'll take Easy over. So that way we still have the uh, the cover on the other side. So that way, if we need to get back through again, we have this thing. We are now, that, now actually doing the fox and the chicken and the yes, beef. we are thing. actually, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the chicken and the cabbage. How many yeah. times is that going to come up in one session? Is the <laughs> yeah. uh, with that coverage, I still need the three of you to make me reflex saves. Okay. Uh, but the DC will be significantly lower for having something over your head. That's good. That's really, really good. <laughs> I'm going to re-roll that. That's a one. <laughs> lower. So You're making good. multiple trips. I can, only, <laughs> I can only go higher from here. That's true. Well, well, you, 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 you can't do worse. 11. Two Wait, ones. And then yeah, I'm 11. 20. With 11, the hatchback. Yeah, I'm sure you're fine. Like Cammy? Two on yeah. and die. What's so. your total? A six. With a six, uh, as you get escorted through, even just in the little bits of it that hit on your clothes and burn against your skin, you are going to take one point of fire damage ah, uh, running fire. through this. That's not so bad. Uh, nine plus... You're fine. Nine plus... <laughs> six. six plus... Plus... Oh, you got your reflex save. Oh, yeah. I thought everyone had three. No, he was in the other you room. You were the one that didn't get yeah, yeah, I was looking at ammonia and bleach. Let me get to your pile. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It it is we also plus, felt bleach. It is plus six. Plus six. You are quite deft. So 12? So 12 total is exactly enough to make through. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to take any lethal damage from it. Uh, Cammy's going to take eight point. You are one step below, like, taking lethal damage to your character but get through okay. Envy and Trey immediately Spicy. burst through the door to what may, this is incredible given the context, be one of the most horrific scenes that you have seen in the day that you've had your memories. The barricade is covered in gore. Not just blood, but a thick bulbous mass of flesh that looks near the size of a horse draped over the front of it. It has no shape. It has no form. It is bulbous, red, bloodied flesh. And punctuated all throughout this mass are eyeballs and mouths. Complete random disarray. Are the eyeballs moving? They are not, nor is this heap which is stuck through with quite a few crossbow bolts in various places, as well as the uh, blade of a short machete that seems to be chopped into the top of it. Uh, You hear again a pained cry, and looking past this, over the top of this barricade and now this pile of meat, you can't see very much, but it is a voice of someone you don't recognize, a woman. Uh, And she is back against the wall, her face stout-featured, bright blonde hair framing much of her brow, clearly in incredible amounts of pain. Much of her hair is pulled back into a single thick braid that drip uh, that drapes down out of sight. Again, you can't see very much of her, uh, but her face is smeared 
with blood as well, bright red and fresh. And next to her is Vostin. Vostin has a short blade in one hand and his bow in the other, panting heavily, spatter across his chest, a clear gash across the top of his shoulder and the top of his off, the top of his right shoulder and his left arm. And as he's panting, he looks down the hall and sees the two of you, and his eyes look just absolutely wild. He does not look like the Vostin you saw before. Back! Get back! We're not getting any closer than, like, where we stood previously. You are at the door. You are some, yeah. like, 20 feet from the barricade here, but opening the door even louder than the sounds of you entering is this thunderous downpour now echoing through the hallway as the rest of the party stumbles in and joins the group of you. What the hell is this thing? And uh, you hear the, the the woman's voice, There's more! Please! Uh, uh, trying to grit her teeth, and he just repeats again, Get out of here! Oh, they don't want our help, so I'm not going to risk my life the helping. The door that they, the survivors keep coming and going from flies open, and several figures pour forth. You recognize Denman. You recognize the elven woman from before. Two more that you don't come alongside them. One, a much older woman, the dark purple handkerchief around graying hair, wrinkled, dark-skinned face, maybe in her 60s. Uh, the other dressed dramatically differently than everyone else here. Uh, she has raven black straight hair and extremely pale skin. Uh, her leather traveling cloak and gear around is still in good condition, like she had just left home. She has a pendant hanging from her neck and a silver badge affixed to one side of her cloak. And as she gets closer, even from this distance, reflecting in the light, you can clearly see one bright green and one pale yellow eye. She starts giving commands immediately. You see both with her hands and with her voice. And people start, you can't hear what she's saying from this distance, but people start scurrying around. And uh, Boston looks back towards you, turns back and says something. And you see Denman throw his little hands, uh, throw his hands up, which is all you can see from the barrier. <laughs> Just we and you can hear his voice. Pierce, we've been through this. It's them. If anything, that's what we need right now. And uh, the black-haired woman again. There's a couple of orders. You see her put one hand up to her necklace and one hand palm open out towards this blonde-haired woman. She closes her eyes and mumbles something, and you see a glow in her hand. And this a lot of this pain leaves the woman's face. Her breathing starts to slow, and she nods. And they exchange some words, and she nods again. And the older woman and Denman both start to help her back towards what you know from your directory now is the chapel. Leaving just... Boston, this black-haired woman, and the elf lady again at the barrier. The one that had the breakdown. The one that had the breakdown. Boston still looks absolutely wild, and you can see Winter looking at the black-haired woman, whose name is Winter, looking at the... <laughs> we'll get there. Looking at him, <laughs> hands up, like she's trying to calm an animal. Uh, leave, and he is now turned towards her and the elf, this same posture. What do you guys do? You're like 20 feet back from this barrier here. Not approaching. Yeah. Not approaching. Waiting. Yeah, then waiting where they can see us visibly in the light, uh, not even having a weapon out. This blob is moving though? No. Okay. Is that thing dead? Can I do like a charisma check to try to ta help her talk him down? You can, I don't you know, can. close enough. As you, as you like start that, as you start, you feel something kind of overcome you. You have a bunch of people here who aren't trusting you. You have this violin and you just start playing. 
It's not your inspired courage. It's not infused with magic. It's nothing like that. It's just... It's just what you do. And it's... Calming. Somehow. You play this, even not knowing what it is that Keys is going to say, what she's going to speak, the notes that come out from your instrument are almost more powerful than whatever it is that she's <laughs> saying. Like it's it's I don't know how to explain this because it's 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 wild. It's Be not magic, words. it's just yeah. It's, 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 you can call it. You can call it that. Yeah. Uh, you look at your, uh, uh, you, you, your feet too, there, my guy. Feet too. I do two feet. feet. Oh, what? Versatile performance. You, you could call it a versatile performance. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> performance instead of diplomacy to make an impression. With okay. your oh. file here, you are of course trained in performance. My little bard. You would be the worst bard in the world were you not. <laughs> Which combined with your incredible charisma is going to give you a plus seven. Ooh. Now, before you roll that, Keys, you are untrained in diplomacy. <laughs> so uh -huh. you yeah. have no additional proficiency modifier, but you do have a plus two. Roll me yours as an aid check okay. to his performance. Because even though you are the one speaking, somehow I'm going to say second fiddle. I get to say second <laughs> fiddle and it's literal. I hope I don't make it work. <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh, eleven. You didn't uh, make eleven it worse. doesn't make it worse. Doesn't make it any better. It is what it is. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. And Remind you, easy. Give me performance check in lieu of diplomacy. Okay. Ooh. Also, That's you're true. baned now. Okay, that helps. <laughs> hey. Because you're a human. Also, I'm baned now for accidentally using a name. <laughs> oh, I'm punished. Well, for you said sins. winter earlier, like loosely. We, when they were we like, knew. we gotta ask winter. She's given orders. We know it's winter. Yeah, like Boston or Delman was like, okay, so you could probably put. I, mean, I had it in my head that you even know who it is. You, you, we put it together through yeah. context, please, I'm sure. Um, four plus seven minus one. Right? <laughs> three so plus seven. So, so Bane, the, the Bane's only even makes a difference. Okay, yeah, 11. So, yeah, 11. As you try. That's what I rolled. <laughs> Neither of you wow. make much of a difference. Here. Maybe it's your distance down the hall. You're like 20 feet away playing some gentle calming music and trying to call out to them. But you see, I guess, again, yeah, you you, they, you heard him say winter before. Through context, you can, this is clearly the leader. Um, you see winter, take a couple of slow steps forward, and her eyes focused in on Boston. She's saying something. Puts a hand to her pendant and looks down. And you see his shoulders start to relax and he drops the sword out of his hand. You hear it clatter to the stone floor. Hmm. And she takes another step forward and puts a hand on his shoulder, says something, and then just pats him. And he nods. And you see the elf woman step out of the way and clear a path for him to trudge back towards that door past the barricade. He stops for a moment, looks back over towards the group of you, back towards Winter, nods with his head your direction and says something, and she just nods and he heads inside. And she just kind of looks at the barrier, and the elf just kind of looks. And she raises a black gloved hand and just motions for the group of you to come over. <laughs> oh, it's new. We're allowed to get near the barrier. I scuttle forward. I scuttle. <laughs> okay. I'll carry like a box to help set it up again. <laughs> You've heard our offer. There is naught we can provide for you, and until we have safe comfort, you can be trusted. I'm sorry. To have you a third. Not no, we were sleeping. Woke up, heard the scream, ran over. Just gesturing at the meat pile. Saw this. Well? Actually. 
actually. There was another. I have a question. Do you know anything about a man in tattered yellow? You've seen him too. He disappeared physically. Tried to kill us in the basement. We've seen him in our dreams. Twice now. You saw him here? Here. He killed our friend Compra. He lies dead now over in the coal chute. I... I have heard nothing of this. I've heard dreams amiss amongst the survivors and had heard tell of this figure, but for him to be here physically, that that is... So you don't, you don't I've not see seen him. him. I feel Not all though, of us have. I feel as though he hunts people in their dreams and kills them there. He's tried to kill us twice now. He succeeded twice, but we keep waking up. I don't think, I don't think he's happy about it. Right then. Compra had seen him, so I wonder yeah. what. Compra, is... Compra got away. No, yeah, we woke him up. Compra saw him in his dreams before. Yeah, yeah and we woke him up with the potion. We got away. But I wonder what the difference is for those who see him and those who don't. Yeah. Maybe he just hasn't gotten to the ones he hasn't seen yet patient we think and he was an employee so it's not a patient thing is there a there is little information that i can give you for now i'm sorry it's not my want to keep you shrouded in darkness but ere i can full trust you there's all right then another question where do we go from here where's the best place to look for another one of these face stillers always a dead end over there they've made some few attempts against our line here from further up this pass. That's all we've seen them. I I have little information more I can give you. I've seen precious little beyond this chapel. I'm a visitor, as may well you may be. For the sake of memory, the end of this hallway where we killed one last week, like that was completely shut off from- There was another door you hadn't gone okay. through, but the collapse stops you from going much further. There are still more doorways on the sides. I would be perhaps remiss to forsake logic in the face of fear. Mother would not look kindly kindly upon me for my misjudgments. If ill were your intents, you were wont to do us harm, this certainly would have been your moment. My name is Winter. I'm sorry. Me too. So you're the reason we've been stuck out here. It was my decision, indeed. But I understand there was little I could do. But now I offer you solace if you take it. I'll have words for you when we're done with this. I mean, it makes sense. I'll just take the solace, actually. Just let let Trey be angry. I'm still not full sure that my decision is correct, but if this be a ploy, then your wiles and stratagems are too deep for me to see through regardless, and I have failed. That doesn't mean all our needs be dropped to provide for you, but... You've brought to, and if you speak true and they were slain by your hand, you're Abel. We need Abel. Please. Oh. And she gestures to a the door that is right in front of the barricade. Will not stop you. I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. The door. <laughs> I will open the door. And uh, as you go towards the door, Tatterman. <laughs> it's a trap <laughs> she turns towards the elven woman you'll hold a learn alone till terse I'll send Denman to relieve you and she just nods winter heads back towards the chapel he's there we will take a break mm. for the afternoon mm. We'll take a brief moment to stand up, stretch our legs, grab some snackage, 
Easy, you're blessed again. Yes. Yay! <laughs> the bless on ending. And, uh, Cammy, you got double blessed. Chat, well, chat wants to love you so much. Aww, it's not a thing, so but, but chat wants to give you It is so much my heart. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be about 10 minutes. We'll be here. Uh, you won't be missing any content. We will, for the sake of running the show as smoothly as possible, I'll be putting up some ads near the end of our break. That is not because we want to run them, but it is because if we do, it will mean that those who join the latter half of the show will not immediately bombarded be bombarded with pre-rolls. So I appreciate all of you for putting up with those. We do what we have to do in the modern era. Thanks for being with us so far. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. As we left off, one of our very scant few wisps of hope in Strange Aeons. But at the cost of what seems like something terrible having taken place at this uh, survivor's barricade here, we briefly met with their leader, Winter, and she has decided to allow us past. You open the door right next to the barricade. And it leads into a very small storage room, which connects through to another very small storage room to its left. A uh, pair of conjoined closets, much like what you found for the cleaning supplies up above. But these ones, uh, this gap between the two is again, clearly just damage to the wall itself. A void large enough for any of you to fairly easily step through. Most of you without really having to stoop or do anything. These one, this first you enter is filled with buckets, brooms, mops, more mundane, simple cleaning supplies, while the other has a small desk and set of chairs that look like they have just been kind of shoved back against the back wall to be out of the walking space. <coughs> the barricade bridges the gap between these two closets, meaning that passing through here allows you to walk around it Ooh. to the backside. When you arrive back out in the hall, as Winter approaches the two large doors near its terminus, where the survivors all keep going, uh, right next to this elven lady, who once again, standing here with a crossbow in her hands, uh, just sort of trying really hard not to look at the thing that's draped over the barricade here. Whatever this mass is or was. I'm... I'm sorry. It's it's not that I didn't trust you or she didn't trust you or anyone didn't trust you, really. It's just... There's no way to know. There's just no way to know. Yeah, we get it. I'm a NASA. Well, I get it. I don't know if all of us get it. No, I get it. I get it. I, get it. I mean, you didn't trust <laughs> us. To be 100% clear, that is not true. That's not trusting. <laughs> but I get it. Well, understanding and liking are two very different things. Okay. Like, this I, guy's I, he, real dismal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can get not liking it. Uh, I mean, uh, none of us really like this situation. Uh, it's, uh, it's terrible. But at least we didn't lose anybody to whatever this thing was. So that that's good. Uh -huh. we're, we're getting better at this, I guess. Why in the hell is there a pile of flesh and teeth? I don't know. I was inside. I... I didn't see it come. I, that was Boston and and Erwin bought it. It was. Are, are there more of these? They they mentioned an eyeball thing a while ago. Oh, the Argon? No, no, no. That's some. That, I don't know what this is. I, I don't want to look Wait, at it. This is not the eyeball thing. No, it has eyeballs. <laughs> no, no. This is. There's, so there's two eyeball oh, things. I'm gonna make an assumption that the eyeball thing has like one giant eyeball. Uh, He's, he's, he has the, the right of it, as his winter says. Um, that's 
we could get this big mass and put it outside and have the boiling rain just dissolve it. Uh, Cause it oh. is kind of messy to look at. I I, I would, I would be, be very, very thankful if you could, you could get rid of it. I, I don't want to touch the thing. If, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to think about it. I, it is definitely dead. Poke it with the stick, find out. Actually, I, I take I my stick I don't know. <laughs> no, how would you know? <laughs> it yeah. looks dead. I'm gonna take it's not moving. Improvised shield and use it to try and push this pile of flesh up and We're gonna off of the wall that they built. And uh, you you push back just this heap of gore that is draped up over this and, and shovel it enough that with a sickening, squelching plop, it drops down to the floor in front of it, sliding down, leaving a bloody streak across the furniture and crates where it was draped. It's heavy. It's thick. But it doesn't react or do anything to you moving it. As oh. you push it around, the, the eyes in its form just kind of roll and angle randomly, giving it a brief illusion of movement, but... Uh, oh, that's horrible. I have I have an idea. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to where we were and go grab the the door on the um from the the chute that we came in underneath since it's on this side of the door. Yeah, now. you left the yellow on that yeah. side. I'm going to I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to put it behind there so that all of us can stand and push it from a single point um up against it without having to like get into the mat. Get to touch icky. the flesh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this was like there's only so much that we need to submit ourselves to. And I think that if this is heavy enough, like we can all shoulder into it. And from one point, I think this will be a giant better way to get iron play will definitely help. Yeah. Uh, but even with the five of you pushing this again, horse sized mass of just flesh and horrors, it's difficult to slide it through the stone floor of this hall. Truly, deeply unpleasant and unnerving work. Need everybody. Come on, oh, man. Dude, no, coming. we took measures. Let's <laughs> check. Oh, this is I want to apart. fail these. We're rolling. I'm going to beat you to the sky. You have a point. I'm re rolling. Are you serious? Yes, you got a 12? I want to get there. Keys, you got a 12. You're okay. M12. You're okay. Ray? It's a 13. You're okay. Seven. Yeah. Come on, dude. No. <laughs> Get one stress and then we want to the problem. That's Ten? true. I yeah. want it. I even spent a reroll on it and I can't get it. No. You have two, seven, one at eight, two more at six. It's certainly starting to take its toll. And as you attempt to force this thing's strange, shapeless form through the door out into the boiling rain. A stench hits as this searing water strikes against the flesh and starts to burn the meat and the blood of the thing away. Uh, it's almost more horrible that the smell isn't awful. Mm. Given your current state Ugh. of hunger. <laughs> Your brain's response to that Steak. is not Salivation. what you want it to be. Uh, no. <laughs> but you get it out the door out into the courtyard and make your way back onto the barricade. Closing that mm -hmm. door so the smell of cooking meat stays out there. Woman nods again now just sat down on the floor behind the barricade, her knees up to her chest, cross on the ground next to her and her arms just up on her knees. Th thank you. <laughs> Has the rain been boiling before? Boiling? It's hot. It's on fire. I mean, it wasn't the first time we came through here. I I, I don't know. We, we don't really have a way outside. Uh -huh. That's good. You wouldn't want to be out there right now. What is it you did before this happened? Were you like an attendant or nurse? I was a nurse. I was a nurse in the, the inpatient wing. I, I worked with a lot of our uh, uh, retirees, I guess we called them our uh, bit of dark humor, our longer term residents who never really had any designs or intentions for leaving. I a couple of them with us now. 
My name's Nasa, by the way. Nasa. Nasa Wailika. I guess would we say can... it's nice to meet you, but is it nice to do anything in these times? Love to give you our names, but we don't exactly remember them. We've just been calling each other what we've came up with. You've patience gowns. Were you patience? I don't recognize any. I was a patient. I was a patient. We only know for sure this one was a patient. There's a hero point for Maverick. Keep trying to fail those stress rolls. I believe in you. That's the <laughs> spirit, boys. I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, well, not, not nothing, which is very adamant that, and she's right. It's important that we, we try to keep some spirits. Morale is very much a thing. Yeah. But especially for the, well, when everything has to look like it's as fine as it can be for the children. Great. I would say focus on happy thoughts, but I don't have much experience in that right now, so... Focus on the fact you killed the pile of flesh. Find something pretty in the in the pile of flesh and look at it. How many for children? For the children? It's not that children for her. We have three. Are they patients? Mm-hmm. They were, uh... Well... I don't know. Brenton's, uh... Brenton's mostly functional. He's... He's, uh... Well, uh, he got a lot worse after the collapse a few days ago. He's he's taking it pretty hard, but... I, understandably, I suppose. He's, he's mostly okay. It's Bates I'm worried about. He's mostly not verbal, but he's... All but closed off since all this happened. And... Well... Maeve wasn't in my word, I don't really know... What? Well, I'd, we can't really get to their files. Huh? But, uh, none of her nurses or any of the doctors are here. Hmm. Right. And I don't have any of Brenton's medication, so he's getting worse. Where's his medication? It's past the uh, <laughs> the Hargus, uh, the the eye. I guess. Look, I guess you should ask Winter. She, she can explain this a whole lot better than I can. Was she a doctor? Oh, no, she's not from here. She's a, a priest of some kind? A monk? Oh. Hmm. Okay. I don't know, but her magic is certainly the only reason that any of us are alive, I think. Hmm. Well, she's... Then got a very strong connection to Erasma, I believe it is, the one she calls the mother. And she draws a fairly deep well of magic from her. It's, it's been great. It's, it's it's very helpful, but it's good for injuries. It's good for wounds. I and mean, everyone will be fine, I'm sure, but it's no help with Branton. It's no help with Loic. And... I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm not that sound ungrateful. <laughs> I, I, I certainly appreciate her, of course. She's, she's done a great amount for us. She's... But... I... I we can only... I, I, should, I shouldn't say too much. I, I don't want to get too negative. You've just gotten here, and I don't want to tell you that the situation here is not any better. But... I mean... It, it sounds... It seems like a, not a good idea to say it can't get worse, because I think that we realize that that's entirely possible, given what we just discovered. Well, it can, and if we have another but couple days and we run out of medicine, I'm sure that it will. Let's just <laughs> say that it has gotten better now that we have access to each other's resources, so there's that. Maybe there are other survivors, you don't know. You killed two face shifters just, just out there, just yeah, with a, with a, with a bed pen and the one cutting hatchet. And yeah. You, and you, teamwork. You, Teamwork. Teamwork. We we barely held off three of them with this barricade and crossbows and this this hall in front of it. Vostin said it was it was the best funnel he'd ever been given. And still we lost four. Right then. They're not easy to kill. No, they're not. Oh. And 
Austin's the only one of us that can really fight. Uh, but. Uh, yeah. well, we haven't eaten in like. Oh, well, we literally can't remember the last time we ate. No. Oh. We can't remember anything. Well, we Do have, you have food? We have. Well, it's not great, but we, it, it, it keeps you alive. We have we have some. That's. <laughs> Denman's put a lot of pride in it, honestly. He's, he's kitchen staff. Um, mm -hmm. He's. Well, I don't ask for his opinion on it, and he'll never shut up, but. <laughs> He's he's been able to do a lot with what little we have, which is basically just uh, cornmeal and bread and water. Yeah, can you uh, can you point us in the direction? Well, that? everything's in the chapel. Okay. Well, if, if you don't mind, we're gonna we're gonna go that way. No, no, of course. All right. Well, why don't you tell me I'm here till Terrace? So I guess I'll be trading out with Denman. And hey, can one of you come back and tell me if Boston's okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if that thing that you pushed out did something to him. <laughs> he seemed out of it. Did, did something to him? I don't know. He he almost fought me in winter, and when we came out, it's a... Uh... Oh. So, basically, we have face dealers who want us to kill each other. And we have this thing that wants us to kill each other. So we can probably safely assume that everything that's happening in this asylum has a goal of making us want to kill each other. But we're staying other. positive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. We're, You're doing it's important to understand job. the situation. We're still yeah. here. Yeah. As Winter says, and we are alive. I mean, they haven't succeeded yet. There's your positivity. Not completely anyway. It sounds like their goal is to tear us apart. So the best thing we can yeah. do is be, work together. Be uh, realistic about it. Let's go get some food. I will yeah. tell you. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> we've heard nothing of the face shifters since the group of you arrived. Okay. Maybe they're afraid of us. You're the only ones who have appeared at the barricade since you will start attacking your way through them. <laughs> so that's something. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm but not then saying this it's thing not. crawled out of the boiler I room, am... so thrilled about food so i'm just gonna like turn and, like start room. walking i'm gonna start walking towards like where the chapel you said it came out of the boiler room i i i, I don't know i just i just picked the place i wasn't here <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> so you head towards the two double doors at near the end of this hall uh, we're here. This for is the, the uh, furthest you've been. This hallway buffet. turns <laughs> to the left. This main thoroughfare of Briarstone, angling only a dozen feet or so, before a ratty scarlet curtain is hung across the hall. You can see that what looks to be a couple of broom handles wired together have been stuck up pretty haphazardly into some damaged sections of the wall above to hold this curtain to divide the hallway in two sections here. These two double doors next to you, where all you've seen all the survivors come and go, must lead to the chapel. But on the southern end where this hallway turns, there are a pair of doors before this curtain. We're going chapel. Yeah, uh, hungry. hungry. Group of you, of I'm course, hungry. have things to do, and that's fine food. You open twin doors into a fairly large maybe 60 70 80 foot wide in all directions span uh, expanse of a large multi-denominational chapel improvised pallets clustered beneath small alcoves with sculpted divinities a couple of scattered cooking fires burned beneath cracked stained, gra stained glass windows set into the walls. The various panes of mostly violet and blue interlocked together at the far end of the chapel, forming massive spiraling patterns beneath prison-like iron bars, keeping them protected, while dozens of candles flicker from throughout the room. You see a great many figures in here. Maybe a dozen. A few you recognize. Denman, working in a pair of small pots next to a few sacks 
and barrels of grains and scant goods. You see Vostin sat down underneath a a small sculpture of a deity with an eight-pointed sun behind her head. An ivory figurine sat in the shelf uh, with winter kneeled down before him talking. Throughout the area, you see many more faces you don't recognize. Uh, Three children, indeed, scattered throughout. Two of them, a boy and a girl, together off into one wing, sitting, seeming with a small array of chalk and charcoal, drawing something on the floor. One sat off by himself alone with a square paper lantern, sat atop a candle in front of him. It looks like there may be five, six, seven other faces in here you've never seen of adults. Mostly human, uh, notably one other gnome. Ah, uh, yes! <laughs> Time to go bowling. As the doors open, Winter turns her head, sees the group of you, and again, motions you to come over. I really can't profess enough how apologetic I am that we must have kept you from what little sanctuary we have for so long, but I pray take my apologies. You'll be all right, Boston. There is... You've seen us through much, and if for nothing else, we all need you. Please. He just nods. No. Uh, yeah, I... Well aware, ma'am. Uh, I don't know what came over me. But, uh, hey, welcome to the end of the world. Glad you could join us. Yeah. <laughs> Boston, York. I can do that proper style now, I suppose. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you right and face to face. Well, if I guess you face dealers, you can do your thing now. Ha <laughs> 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 ha uh, I gotcha. And it glares at him. I said we need able bodies, and I meant it true. That thing at the barricade. I need to make sure if Austin's okay, and I don't want to make him face it again. They have just joined us, but can I ask you later to help Nasa in removing that? Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we yeah. did that. Yeah, it's melting in the boiling. Your yeah. Our friend at the barricade asked us to move it. That explains your delay, then. Seems I was more than remiss to judge you swiftly. And she's also worried about your friend here as well. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be okay. Don't worry about me, sir. It's uh, on the line of duty. Hmm. I think, uh, I don't know, just didn't sit quite right in my head. Was uh, talking, talking, saying something. And it was hard not to listen. With the mouths, I can imagine I could say a lot. You tried to kill your friends. I didn't try to. That's hey, 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 hey. Didn't try to kill anyone. I just didn't know who was where and who. I. Uh, they said you tried to kill him, so. <laughs> uh, we would love some food. Winter puts a hand <laughs> on his knee. <laughs> So flow down the endless river, mother's decree of continuance. So is there wander amiss nor drift astray. You weren't, your mind wasn't your own. Food is something we can provide. We've little, but with what you've done for us, I'll gladly grant it. Normally we wouldn't be feeding tall nuns, but I suppose we can ask Denman if he can prepare something more swiftly. Come, join me if you will. And uh, she stands and walks over towards Denman, uh, where he's sitting with a much older man uh, who looks like he must be 80 or 90, whose back has got a solid arch, oh. shoulders, real hunched <laughs> forward. What little oh. hair he's got still kind of clinging around the sides and the back <laughs> of his head has long since lost any color. And he kind of raises a hand and grins a crooked, a crooked smile, missing a couple of teeth. Uh, there's more. Have they? Uh, did my sister send you? Demon's like your sister didn't send anyone. Lois. 
Well, Glad Winter's finally seen any semblance of reason. It just says straight at her. Hmm. Well, you look damn hungry. Well, at least I assume that's the only reason anyone bothers coming to good old Denver. Mm, very much so. Yes. That's good conversation. Well, and a reasonable individual. Mostly good news the food. For you. <laughs> yeah, Denman's own handmade cornmeal patties. He's already putting a couple of them together. And if she wasn't seen to bring you in here after all that, I was going to bring them out to you anyways. Least we can do. And a water skin. But uh, well, I guess you're here now, so you can share and partake. No, Winter doesn't say anything to this. She just kind of looks down at him. It's the grimace on her face. Eat what you will. Take your fill, please. But when you are ready, I have further want of you. <laughs> and uh, turns and heads back towards Boston, just leaving the group of you here with Denman and this old man. This here is Lowen. He's one of uh, Nasa's patients. You met Nasa? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He looks like her, sure. The nervous uh, lady. Nah, she's the. Uh, he's a. Uh, Nice fella, but needs someone to keep an eye on him sometimes. Uh, especially because we're having to ration out his medication a little wider than she'd like. I don't know. I'll just make the food. Here, take a seat. Pop a squat. Grab some tile. It's almost done. I pop my squat. <laughs> <laughs> take a seat. As he pulls uh, this here together, it looks to just be kind of boiling gritty. Uh, boiling's a strong word for like slowly plopping. Just oh. like gritty yellow mush in a pot. It don't like look and great. corn. But Yummy. given your state, you know, you'll take what you can get. And he ladles some of it out onto a... Uh, there are a couple of actual metal plates that he has, but not enough for the group of you, and it seems like there's only a few. The guy brought out the finery for you lot. I'm waiting to do this. I'm gonna hold <laughs> out special occasions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's... Yeah, it's a bedpan, right? That thing's for pissing and not eating off. It's seen worse. <laughs> Your funeral. <laughs> I, I want a plate, please. <laughs> <laughs> Only please. the finest metal plates from the cafeteria for Yay. our new joinees. Sorry, I can't give you more than about a fist's worth of it, but you let it cool if it solidifies a little bit. It's almost like bread. If someone explained bread to you and you'd never heard of it or seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Plops out a couple more, and then there's a couple of square ceramic tiles that he puts uh, oh. the last couple on. He just hands out to the group. Yeah, he's like, "Not for you, Logan. You just ate an hour ago. You had breakfast. You can wait until lunch, like the rest of them. Well, these fine folks here, these uh, local heroes, they've been out here dealing with the uh, problems outside the chapel. So, uh, long story. Don't worry about it." Oh. Oh, so you, oh, you have been outside the chapel. You must have seen my sister then. I'm going to lie to him and uh, just make up some small story about running into her and being sent this way. I'm already, no, I'm trained in you deception. Check your files. All right, you, you got that? All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can give me a deception trade just to you guys all, uh, 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 uh from Millennium here. Trade hey. immediately goes to white lie. Pass it by a bit. Uh, that is a 14. 14. He listens and the smile grows wider. I knew it. I, I knew I'd heard her just outside. I don't know why she hasn't come in yet. Oh, she's just busy. Give her just a little bit of time. She'll be by. Uh, Demon just kind of glares at you. Oh, like, well, she's out with Nisa at the moment holding the barricade. So why, why don't you just wait until she comes back in and we'll get that all sorted out right and proper and he uh stands up and kind of dusts off his knees and sort of walks over to you uh, that yeah i get you're trying to appease an old man here but it really ain't helping i've got the feeling he won't remember in five minutes hey, anything do we give feeding him into these uh hallucinations of his he's hearing it's only gonna make him believe it harder <laughs> but anyway what brings you to my kitchen on this here fine morph? Hunger. Food. Hunger. 
The same thing that brings everyone to have some of Denman's own homemade cornmeal mush. When you get to the damn kitchens, there's plenty of preserves and beans and rice in there. I could at least make something right edible out of it, but... Mm. Where's the kitchens? Yeah. (laughs) I don't think the direction's so much the problem. There's a... Oh, you guys ain't poked around out here? We've been down that hall and this little side room where the goal shoot is, and that's that's it. Fair enough. There's a... Well... We can't really get to the door that leads to much of the rest of the asylum anymore. We can't get to the foyer or any of the prep areas, the kitchens, the inpatient. Now, this hallway up here that leads up to rehabs collapsed, and well, there's a big old mossy eyeball on the door leading the other way. If you ain't seen the eyeball, then take it. I'm sure you'd remember the thing. It's real visible. We keep hearing about it, but we haven't seen it. Oh, well, it's exactly what it damn well sounds like it is. I don't know what to do about it. Is it neither does winter, neither does anyone. Is it in the door or on the door? No, it's kind of the whole thing, as far as I can tell. He's a, he's a, a pretty big sucker, honestly. Hmm. Anyone try to fight it, attack it? Or? No, we tried poking it. We tried scraping it up. We tried a bunch of stuff. Nothing's really working. Thing just screams it up, so you know, it makes people go right insane. Oh, I guess that's... <laughs> and uh, as he he says that, he immediately, like, slowly kind of turns and looks over towards the gnome who was just glaring his direction. Yeah, <laughs> kitchen talk. I suppose to use that word in the asylum. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can see winks, why. Winks over <laughs> towards the gnome. I'll be hearing that from Tolman later. <laughs> Nasa, too, so good thing she's at the bear. She, good thing she's on guard duty now. <laughs> Don't tell her. I but uh, the gnome is one of the uh, ex-faculty. Yeah, uh, we we got a couple of them in here. Uh, so you know, Boston. Boston was an orderly. Tolman over there, that gnome, he was an orderly too. Uh, we had Nasa was uh, right. <laughs> Nasa here. <laughs> oh, the barricade. You met her. She was one of the nurses. So she's. Well, the only one of the only ones among us that knows how to do anything, really. And then we had uh, one of the one of the laundry ladies over here, Erwin. But uh, well, she's resting off whatever happened about I don't know, 15 minutes ago over there. We broke the damn hell out of her arm and shoulder. The winter's magic can't fix that. Mm. She's one of them. Uh, Dolphin sorts, though, you know? She's tough. So what? She'll be fine. I'm sure she's taken worse. So what happened to the doctors? Look, this Briarstone's a big place. You know, we had... I mean, I don't know. I'm just in the kitchen, we got what? Dozen and a half staff? Two dozen total on the schedule? It's just me here. Ain't a lot of people survive whatever happened. Here, let's take the... I gotta stay with the... I can't go too far from Loic, I guess, but I'll keep an eye on him. He likes to make a run for it sometimes. But, uh... That's what we got. There was maybe... We, when Winter first let us in here, when everything started falling apart, uh, I don't know. Two and a half, three dozen of us total. Lost a couple of the face shifters, lost a few of that eyeball thing. That's a couple to, let's call it unforeseen circumstances. That's what we got left. Wait, the eyeball killed people. Yeah. Not directly. Mm. Mm. Sure, got him down the path, though. So that whole scraping the eyeball off the wall thing. Everyone who tried that. By their own hand. Mm. Oh. Miserable way to go. Yeah, it ain't pretty, but well, that's why I work in the kitchens. I just want to make stuff for the cafeteria line. I ain't the ones dealing with that. Honestly, truth be told, I don't know how Nasa does it. She may not look like a whole lot, but got a will about as strong as anyone I've ever seen. Just like the food is like cool enough, I'm just gonna like down it all in like one 
go on my plate, just like Beauty and the Beast style. <laughs> so I guess I can tell you now. But I don't think you're going to like what I have. I really ain't got a whole lot of story for this. There was an earthquake. Stuff started coming down. A lot of the buildings started collapsing. And then, you know, everything went to hell real damn fast. It's quick like earlier. Yeah, but, you know, a lot bigger than that one. Bringing down rooms, bringing down wings. I think it's probably what collapsed much of the hall down there to rehab. But at the same time, people started losing their damn minds. Well, obviously, uh, you'd think this would be the best place for that. Maybe in all of Amistad. Certainly all of Ustalov. But it wasn't like that. It was... Well, no. Can't use the I word. I don't really know a better way to put it. I ain't a wordsmith. I make... I make cherry jelly. <laughs> so people can have a good dessert. But they was... Clawing at themselves, swinging at each other. It was damn prison riot but it wasn't just patients it was staff too it was, I don't know what was causing it. it seemed like about half the people in the building lost it immediately and uh then there's you know the zombie things yeah also as far as I can tell this is my own personal working theory here got a lot of those well, they turn out to be right most of the time. My gut, my gut ain't let me wrong yet. Pretty much anyone who was asleep at the time. Stuff happened to them. They, uh, woke up real hungry and they wasn't wanting Denman's own homemade cornmeal wads, I'll tell you that. They was wanting man meat. <laughs> it's, a uh, all serious now. They're like, ghouls. I think Winter was calling them. She says it's a disease of some kind. You ain't been seeing them in your sleep? Tell you what. Big man, yellow, tattered clothes, got a razor. Nah. Trust me, all the work you're gonna be putting in here, you're gonna close your eyes, you ain't gonna see nothing. It's just gonna be the next day. You're gonna wonder where that rest went. Nah, he's been coming after us every night. And just a little bit ago, that earthquake, he was there. Well, you're not the first one who said that, I suppose. A couple of... We weren't all... Not everyone that's here was here immediately. A couple of people have trickled in. There were some, I mean, well... Like you lot! <laughs> you ain't the first to have come and joined us. Wait, did you make the others also kill three face dealers? Well, we didn't know about the face dealers at first. That's kind of a new development, you could say. I certainly weren't prepared for that one. That's the biggest toll in, well, lives we had for sure. Look, I'm sure Foster will tell you the same thing. So Nasa soul anyone. Winter's got a damn good heart, and she's the only reason about any of us are still here. Don't hold it against her. No, you're fine. I was just, I was curious, you know, how many other people have been successful at Don't killing. hold it against her. She I'm gotta not do what mad you gotta do. at her. I'm mad at being stuck out there for two days. And that's, you know, totally fair and reasonable. More than understandable, honestly. But we couldn't risk who we got left. Let her to give anything or anyone in here, and she don't even know us. She's not from this asylum. She's just a traveling monk or some such. Cleric of Phrasma. What she was, was she doing visiting the asylum? I don't know. Looking for someone, apparently. I don't know if she's family, one of the patients, or what. She's in Caliphas, so she ain't from too far. A uh, couple days journey. What is that? Two, three weeks away? Sure. Caliphas? <laughs> sure. The capital? Sure. Yeah. They really don't know nothing. The capital of... The capital of Ustalop. The right. place we are... Where is that? Priest. We know we're Galarian. That is it's actually an, in, an interesting question. Though. I would say you probably know Ustalop. I would well, give you that. I'm trained just... in society. So being told these names, would I like start With to you're remember... training in society, you would at least put together... like Even if you didn't... You would know Caliphus is the capital I just, of yeah. Ustalop. I just look him dead in the eyes like, it's a joke. Huh. 
David, he'd been here for 10 minutes, and then he already got one over on me. <laughs> All right. Fair and fine, I suppose. Well, well party's over. <laughs> he points over at uh, Winter, who is walking over. And uh, she comes. How's the group of you? Well, we were just talking about you. Actually, I was just making a joke. I can hear. Denman is far from subtle. Oh. <laughs> she just kind of smiles down at him. <laughs> well, you know me. Well, enough. I don't know you at all. She just kind of nods. Nothing in any of my liturgies has anything to do with, well, dealing with some of their swords. You'll forgive me my conventions. I'm spend much of my life dealing with a very small cloister of people. Very strict and scheduled life. If I offend, I mean nothing by it, but my conventions and my courtesies are those of my cloister. And, uh, well, my priory, I suppose. Well, so who were you coming to visit when you just happened by? <laughs> I came down here on a I don't know how to describe it in words that would sound like any logic to you I've come to learn very quickly that priorities are very different in the world abroad for my priory but a holy mission I was joined by many others of my faith and many others who lent us their arms and their blades I owe them my life for being here as I am the last the only among them who survived this collapse, as you've come to be calling it. And she has this pendant. You train a religion. No check is necessary to see this gray spiral she has is a holy symbol of Phrasma. It shares much with the motifs of the big violet and blue stained glass window on the far, like, the main feature behind where the primary altar would be if this chapel had one. Zoom. 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 Enhance Zoom. on the thread. Enhance. Raise the helix. And uh, she reaches up and puts a hand to it. But the mother has unknowable ends, and her fates are not mine to question. I am alive for a reason, as surely as they are no longer. Souls rest in a cycle, and the cycle they are continuing, ever present and ever known past the all end. I am from a priory in Caliphas, and know honestly very little of the world outside. This is the first journey I've taken abroad. How do you like it? <laughs> we roll, we roll Not up great. Mm. Well, Our finest hospitalities. I and my desires are secondary to the means of the mother. I do as she desires, as she demands, and help to serve her well in this life, so that my soul, my soul, will be judged kindly as I pass the river. But that doesn't mean that I have accepted that none of us will see the light of day again. If you carry this misconception that well, many of the fellows here have, my beholdence to prophecy and fate and to the mother's whims does not mean that I have no control of my own. Fate is as we make it. Our actions are not preordained per se, but if we take no action, that too is a defiance of our, of our purpose. I will do everything that I can for you as I have for everybody else here in this chapel to keep you safe, fed, and well. Hail and in good health. And alive, as long as I can see it be. Whatever that need require, be it my life or any succor I can provide. And also with you. <laughs> I make to you a confession. I had hoped that given your abilities, given your clear skill, few among us are fighters. Boston is a veteran of many years fighting for the armies of Ustalov against the demons of the world wound, and he has seen much evil and borne sword against it. 
is about our blade to defend us. Denman has proven competent. And Danae, apparently a patient of this very hospice, is more than capable. But from what Vostin tells me, even just how he looks at you, how you carry yourselves and bear what weapons you have, your skills are far beyond possibly any of ours. I had hoped that you could ensure the way to the north was safe. The other face shifters or whatever else may rest there. We are precious low on supplies, on food, on goods, on simple things. Many of the patients here require frequent medications and we have very little. Some of them not at all. Some of them seek simple comforts, blankets, warmth, fires, trinkets, and even things as simple as plates upon which to dwell, a wish to sup. We've near nothing. If we knew we could pass the barricade, and not at risk of life and limb, that would be a great comfort to us and a great answer to many of our needs. So, I ask this of you. I will not reject you if you decline, but please. Boston tells me you have been near to as far as that hall proceeds. Is it safe? Is it clear? Have you seen it all through? And if not, will you? Couple rooms left to check. But that's it. Uh, and the yellow guy came out of nowhere. So yeah. and that's a different thing. thing. Also came from the boiler room, maybe? Is what So said. we don't know. The answer is we don't know. But at the same time... If nothing else... The group of you have been able to venture forth into those depths and return, well, what seems to be mostly in good health. I mean, if you've got five extra mouths to feed, we can all just camp out here and slowly starve, or I guess we can uh, make use of anything what that recent you energy could we've gained. Bring to us, supplies, no matter how simple, would be of great value. Food and water, of course, are primary and are front of minds. Those are constant needs in this medication near a close second, but there are so many things I never imagined I would want for so fondly. Bed sheets, pillows, blankets. We have Cammy's giant oversized blanket. <laughs> There's a view <laughs> down the hall as well as cleaning supplies. Anything you could bring us would be a great aid. Do you have some backpacks we have um, some bags some satchels like, like empty ones i could certainly send you with what goods we could please our means are yours if you would be able to bring us anything if you would be able to ensure us at least some degree of safety i mean at this point we are fairly well rested and we're only going to get weaker so empty yeah. bags is all we'll need i can provide he's a uh, Doppelgangers, face shifters, as they've come to be known here. They. They are not creatures of any unknowable magic or occult ritual. They can use their malleable forms to deceive, and they have surprising power and swiftness, but little else. If none remain in these passageways to the north and the rest of this ward, none threaten us. If any other survivors were to come to the door, they would not be faced with the questions we had to pose to you. They could not simply appear. Clearly there are other dangers, but any removed is one less. Speaking of those, they've been like collecting strips of skin. Um, I don't know if we should bring, like, I don't know if you have anyone who studies, like, I don't know if you have doctors, but any friends, I don't know, something that can like, we can find out how they work, or if there's a way to identify them from people. I know little of their whims, and littler of their actual biology. As part of my teaching growing up in the Priory, we studied a great many creatures of the world, various aberrations, arcana, beings seemingly bereft of soul or nature, those who forsake the cycle, forsake the light of all gods, and who walk outside the path. The doppelganger was one of them. I know of their nature. 
some of their ability, but little of their, I suppose, physical makeup. I don't know that any here would be able to learn much of them. That we slew some at the barricade. Mm -hmm. Some few more retreated with grave injuries. We didn't think to study the corpses. Do you have any form of like restraint? Like if we were to take one alive, maybe? Hmm. Is there something that could be learned from them? I don't know. I wouldn't take one alive. It would only take one person to like go slightly mad, like what happened earlier. Given their capabilities, yeah. they are not simply able to take form. They're able to take thought as well. Mm. Uh, those they are exposed to in close proximity, those they can match eyes with, they can gaze into your mind, into... Are you your... saying if we don't look them in the eye, they can't read our minds? Yes. Oh. We could bag them, restrain them, or but, cover our own eyes. But even one, <laughs> even one in the camp with the ability to take yeah. any form and any memory... They die um, much easier. Yeah. I feel it's a risk not worth taking. True, true, true. I just... We're supposed to reserve for a fire away. It sounds at least easier to maybe fight one if we know we can't look it in the eyeballs. How do you want us to identify ourselves when we come back? Herein lies our continuing problem, doesn't it? Any pass phrase or gesture I could tell you they could read from you. Willing to take you. If you have an answer to that question, that's what one we get to solve. What about a symbol or something? Like we do have an answer. And we've been saying it since we met everyone at the barrier. When you cut them, it seals up. But they can, like, that's fake it. Like, they had a broken mind. I was, I was that, a that form. Isn't, that isn't what we saw. When our bolts and blades struck them at the barricade, they stuck their injuries and bled as any man. Then why did the one that we saw keep healing? Ever more reason to be rid of them quickly, I suppose. Mm. Mm. But, I mean, do you have any sort of, like, thing you can give us that's of yours? And that way you know that they can't, like, duplicate I that I could object. give you one of my salters, and... I suppose I'd hope they would not, if they could read of you and they took you, at least they would have to slay you to take it from a body, I suppose. If there were five of them, as Faustin argued to no end to me when you first arrived, you would surely be able to take us regardless. Hmm. I'll retrieve one. And uh, she heads over to just, uh, you see there are a couple little smatterings of goods, little bags, sacks, a couple of almost just mattresses of blankets just laid out among the floor, very little. Most of them, though, just seeming to have to sleep on the floor, the stone of necessity. Most of the sections that have been given true comforts, that have rolls of blankets and bed rolls and a couple of cloaks gathered together looks like they were put together for the children. Um, and Erwin, as you now know, with her broken arm is resting in a small area, at least on a thin bedroll. Winter indeed heads to a small collection of goods, but seemingly no visible to pl place to rest save for the stone, and digs through a stack of books. Pulling out one of them. I'm much larger than this. <laughs> Across its cover is a similar silver spiral to her pendant and a long title in gilded text. And she hands it over to Psalter of Summer's Liturgies. Bear this, then I suppose I will have to hope against hope that it's still you. I'll put in my new backpack. <laughs> I have some magic. Much of what's available to me I have already applied on Erwin. Poor soul today. Her wounds are severe. My magics can mend superficial injuries. It can help stitch together skin, renew some lost blood, but... 
whatever that thing at the barricade that's injured her far worse than that but should you return or should you need I will give you what little aid I can I cannot dedicate all of my magics to you there are many that need it but during louds and the eve at vespers I provide what little I have to all of the congregation your presence they'll partake as well Hmm. I'm afraid oh. there's precious little else I can tell you about the situation. At least doppelgangers, save for the true name. What about the eyeball? She just kind of grimaces. It's... It's another problem. But it's one thing at a time. What were the true name? No, oh, well, just doppelganger. That's okay. all. Okay. Face shifter is appropriate. I'll give them that, but... So, too, is that of the doppel. I can see why they call them what they do. The simple, raw title. Perfectly adequate for what they are. And... She, uh, reaches up to a knife she has in her belt, undoes the buckle and slides the sheath off of it, and hands it out to you in here. And Salter is for recognition. This, perhaps... A blessing to keep you safe. Let's take it. Make of its blade has no particular use against the Doppels, but may it serve you well anyway. Hmm. Alchemical silver. It was given to me by the mother of the Priory when I left. As a blessing and a gift of good luck. I'm still alive to bear it. May you be as well. I'll return, return it to you in good shape then. That reminds me. I have a crossbow I have to get back. <laughs> You're damn right you do. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I've been stuck with is a piece of crap. Just string on this. Floppy like a damn yarn ball. Now, where's that? How many bolts? Four. How many bolts did you shoot? Two. Oh, she shot two. She's <laughs> actually a really good shot. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I didn't really expect to get any of those back. I kind of figured he'd be firing this thing left, right, and center. That's damn near as big as you are. The hell? <laughs> <laughs> you can see Cammy just like pop up like. They right. say that I'm like the strongest one in the group. And he looks up at Winter. We ain't gonna see. talk to everyone about the fact that this thing can fire a crossbow perfectly fine. All right. Mm, I'm just flexing. <laughs> <laughs> Winter just kind of smiles down. What? Your pride wounded, Denman. <laughs> The thing he won't tell you is the first he had to pull the trigger on one of those, he nearly fell over backwards. It spooked me. It wasn't worth the crossbow. It then changed its face when I hit it. And I hit it. Vostin hit it. <laughs> Unless you started fletching feathers into the root of your bolts. Well, I hit it first try. Uh, did you, so. yeah. Just, it's not a competition. You know, I don't want you to feel is. that. Oh, okay. You need to get to. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this no more. I got lunch to make. Uh, whatever it is, do you call lunch is coming. <laughs> he just looks down. How hot is it? It's sexed. <laughs> it's not funny. It's sexed. It's sexed. <laughs> the sixth hour. Why? Uh, He's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's funny. funny. Was that a joke? Apparently. Mm. <laughs> See, it's funny. Because she grew up in a cloister and don't even get why it's funny. <laughs> it's kitchen humor. She'll never get it. <laughs> Damn right. All right then. Well, let's go clean out those closets. I give you, make your way back out of the cathedral. Seemingly at the, possibly the perfect time is as you reach the door, uh, the little girl immediately just starts screaming. Not like pain or panic, just crappy child throwing a tantrum screaming. <laughs> a the sound perfect time to that leave. absolutely emanates <laughs> through the stone and glass chapel as uh, quickly the gnome Tolman forgoes what he was doing to turn and head over her direction. And once again, back out into the halls you go. 
you have made a lot of progress here. And as you work your way down the path towards where this rubble has choked through the way towards apparently the rehab area, it seems there is little left for you to explore. The last little gift you were given by your friends down below Compra, that directory that you could look through, labeled this area off to your left as the laundry facility. is a huge operation for a facility of this size. The door sits just barely in front of where the collapse becomes too severe to pass. Corner of the frame even cracked in, and the door itself having lost a, a large part of the wooden paneling near that damage, splintered across the floor. As the group of you pick through the rubble here, you see one more sight near this end. Off to your right, Cami, for the first time, is seeing this pair of collapsed chambers strewn about with both human and double corpses that have had these rectangular strips of flesh just flayed off of their faces and their shoulders. Uh, say methodically, but for what purpose? Unknown. It's not pleasant to look at. But as you come a little further forward, again, the ground becoming difficult going, hard terrain just by the depth of the rubble and the stone, you can see well, maybe one of the earliest victims of the collapse. A body trapped, crushed underneath the wooden timbers and massive stone blocks at the terminus of this passage. Only the top half of this figure is visible. Uh, their head now down in for long enough that the blood has just solidified and clotted into a sticky dark mass around the stones near it. Um, one hand pinned up underneath the rock at the elbow and the other hand reaching out in front of it, fingers up, just splayed down. And what you can see of the shoulders, though, they're wearing a black leather traveling cloak and garb, much akin to what Winter has. Near identical, in fact. But face down as the figure is, you can't see if he has the silver badge or the pendant. You hear a clattering of rubble and pebbles as, given the size of this mass and the recent quakes, all of this debris hasn't fully settled. Like, what are you guys doing as you approach? Exploration mode. Is uh, I am sneaking. Sneaky Vicky. I am the Mega Dead. Mega Dead. <laughs> um, I'm keeping an eye out. I'm peeking. I'm gonna be just checking my surroundings. I'm gonna actually be very carefully watching rubble fall. I got my poking stick. Fair enough. Right. Got a new one for you. Ooh, you have your little shield now. Fair enough. You're gonna be keeping this raised, keeping it in front of you, in case something should happen you're ready it's like i don't know did something something traumatic happen to you earlier yeah, today possibly <laughs> <laughs> trust nothing the old up cammy um i'm going to be um <laughs> with quite a bit of cockiness <laughs> and uh after the previous conversation uh my crossbow right i take a second to like <laughs> arrange it so it's loaded um, like kind of leveraging it against my belly so I can pull it all the way back. I love back. that the people at home can't see this but when Sully says that her feet also like go off the ground <laughs> the show, like, she kicks her little show, feet like, back oh, and she's laughing <laughs> kicks her like, like oh, oh, to like this <laughs> like like you're just like one foot I'm sorry like one foot in the air as you pull to like backwards <laughs> I didn't even know I was doing that. Um, it's adorable. It's really cute. Funniest thing ever. 
Oh, but what are you uh, going on over here? You have that at ready, so you're gonna be scouting. Scouting? Oh, you're, yes. scouting. you're looking for something to blap. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. Kevin's ready to blap. How about you, Ethan? I'm Andy? playing. You just, playing? Yeah, I'm inspiring. Keeping your your yeah. inspiration going. <laughs> you got your your bard giving you the yeah. background music, plucking away at the strings <laughs> of his violin. Nice acoustic. Yeah. Nice, nice acoustic violin plucking sound. It's, it's very quiet. It's case, just like, like, you don't like C, like, F, and G uh, over and over again. You know, it's the sneak music. It's the sneak music. Yeah. Pirates of Fazan. You know, have seen like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. No, yes. You can't just scream and like have all the avalanche come down. So you're like making sure that you're not bringing that. <laughs> MD, with your eyes forward here looking at this, this pile of rubble is... Somewhat dangerously close to the door here. Give me a perception check, seeker. Um, it's a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. As you look down, the bulk of the rubble seems to have mostly settled. You were near this yesterday, fighting, and uh, it doesn't seem to have massively changed, even with the quakes that hit. You don't think there's a danger, at least immediately of the ceiling coming down. And if there is, well, there's little you can do about it at this point. If that's just in the category of like, if it's gonna collapse, that could happen pretty much anywhere in the asylum. What you do see is that this body laying on the ground underneath, pinned under all of this, is moving very slightly. The upright hand, one finger, is just slightly twitching, and you can see his cloak pinned down flat to his back, just very slightly shifting as if he was flexing his back muscles. I'm gonna pull out the dagger, approach the body, just kind of try to slit up the neck. He's not you, dead. I'm trying to make sure he's dead. You step up, bring your dagger down, and just stick it in the side of this. And your dagger punches through easily. You have a proper weapon now, a clean knife. But as you do, all of you hear a sound, like a mass of clay pulling apart and ripping fabric. As you stick your knife in, and the whole of the head rips off of the body, tumbling amongst the stones. You definitely did not do that. You did not decapitate him. But you hear no sound of the spine break. It was already detached. At the same time, you hear cracking of bones, and again, this sound like a thick paper ripping as that hand flicks itself and rips the skin free of the wrist, flipping and jumping, moving on its own like a dying spider. The other hand, even pinned as it is, pulls itself out at the elbow. And the head, one eye crushed entirely into the skull, the other rolling. Mouth agape. No tongue, nothing inside. Bites and snaps as it rides on the ground. I need everybody to roll me some initiative. Oh, no. You have a plus one from Cami sneaking here. Oh. Mm. Oh, but the bad times come in. He's take a hero point from a fellow seven brides for seven brothers yeah. fan. Hey. <laughs> All about the musicals. All about the musicals. Okie dokie. And we'll start with you, Keys. Uh, you can roll stealth or perception. Oh, that's right. Because you are sneak. It is up to you. Sneaky. Um, 23. 23. Um, MD. 15. 15. Trey. Nine. Nine. Ooh, this is the level one initiative I've ever seen. <laughs> I Fields raised. 19 I'm on good. the die. 24. 24. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also 19. Easy. <gasps> yes. Plus seven, so. 26. Whoa. 26. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> dude. Too soon. 
and me, me and him are not ready. And yeah, we we'll all I'm react. Ready. I'm hiding behind my shield. MD just kind of looking like gobsmacked at this. What the hell is happening? Man. The head blitz up into the air, launching itself seemingly by almost on an unseen string, yanked before it just flies, floating around, mouth just snapping towards you. Spooky. Spooky. So too do the pair of hands also writhe forward and lunge. That cousin it. We just went from like a seven brides for seven brothers situation to uh, the labyrinth with the uh Oh yeah. Wall preacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ain't got no head. <laughs> MD, you ain't got no you head. Had a 15. 15? <laughs> yes. The head is going to get a 14, which we'll put it right there. I really want there to be a hand for the next little thing, but there's probably not. <laughs> the hands, I don't have a hand one. Oh. The hands <laughs> are going to get an 18. All right, easy, you're a little further back. You're not in the immediate splash zone for this. <laughs> you have some uh, uh, space, I suppose, to react. Okay. You see these, each hand in the head, animating towards MD and Trey, lunging at them. It's pretty handy he's in the back. He really came ahead out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I'm gonna continue playing. <laughs> I'm gonna inspire that courage, and then I'm gonna <laughs> see if I can get a headshot with God. <laughs> get a headshot. <laughs> Give me a top guy for Jedi. We're going for a headshot. Uh, eight plus seven is fifteen, which is a hit. Oh, oh, it's because it's just kind of a flying it head. Is. It's it's not like particularly fast. It's just kind of floating erratically, and you're fairly close to it. It's definitely not trying to dodge or anything. It's just <laughs> moving about. Solid one plus four five. Five points of damage into the head. Okie dokie. Uh, and as you flip that up, Hammy in the back, you're ready to go. I'm so ready. What are you doing? First, um, I would like to, as I kind of like take uh, take my aim towards the head, um, I'd like to just kind of run my hand over the crossbow and just kind I'm of- I'm an idiot. I just wrote on my initiative table. This is fine, it's just funny. What, what, what? I my brain shut down. I missed everything you said. No, okay. I was staring at this, trying to figure out where my disconnect is. I was like, all right, I got three enemies. I have H for the head, H for the hand, and H to, wait a second. <laughs> I, I was literally, I didn't hear a word you said because I was just staring at this thinking, why are there two H's? That's hilarious. What am I doing? I am, oh my, I don't know what. That's the <laughs> the cranium. I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The SpongeBob. Wow, a dial-up noises. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> It's like the meme with like all the math, like is yeah. like yeah, yeah, but all the math is wrong. You just zoom in. It's like, <laughs> um, no, I'm just gonna as I take my aim, I like to just run my hand down my crossbow. I'm just gonna whisper to it and be like, "You got this, little buddy." Uh, casting magic weapon <laughs> on it. Saucy bow. Okay. It better. Um, so I believe it's gonna add a plus one yep. to whatever it else I add to this. Brave little crossbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, pop culture references it brought to you by Shelly. <laughs> plus, plus one to hit, and if you hit, you will roll two dice instead of one. Yes. It's yes. Uh, it's gonna get pretty blasty. All right, I'm gonna sh shoot it. At Pew. the head or the little hand. At the head. Get the head. All right, that's a fourteen on the die plus the one plus. Whatever Another else one. I add here, nah. plus four. The numbers. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I think plus four, so 19? 19 will definitely hit. Yes, yes. All, All right, right, now we Last will damage. Punch it into this floating disembodied head. Aha, 1d8. Whoa. Five, okay, so 13 damage. 14 damage. 14 yeah. damage from the Inspired Courage. 
14 no. damage. <laughs> that crossbow bolt is going to shoot in, and it's just a lone head. It will punch through and send this, this head flying back with it as it pins it back into the pile of rubble, and the jaw drops slack, one side of it detaching entirely as the thing falls truly dead. Mm. <laughs> I hold the crossbow I left, I go, Bullseye! Bullseye, did you see that? <laughs> Good Jeez. job, Tammy. So where are the hands at this point now? The hands are up in front of MD. Um, okay. They are a decent little distance away from you through the difficult terrain. <laughs> you could get there in a single action. Yeah. But it'll be like as far as you can go. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I also have, wait. No, I guess my, my terrain starter doesn't actually do anything with- Doesn't give you difficult like, terrain. Like the difficult terrain. Right, it's sneaky beaky. Yes. Yeah, why not? I'm just gonna like, go through everybody and get up there. Cause I can. <laughs> you rush up as MD is just kind of like staring wide eyed. It's like he like he can't process what Matt. he's looking at. <laughs> Matt flying past. Yes. Then. You rush in and what? Um, is it possible to tumble through? Cause like there's not a hole there. I mean like there. Sorry, there is not a floor right there, right? Probably not a tumble throwing situation. Yeah. Okay. With hands, unfortunately. Okay. Um, that's okay. I'll just I'll just whack at it then. I got my uh, my orderly sap. And I'm just gonna like see if I can just like golf this thing like over into the uh, into the little abyss because there's no floor right there. Um, so I'll do that. Four. What? I'm gonna reroll that. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I mute. That's much better. It's a golf. Uh, it's a golf. It's a so four. that yeah. is a fifteen. <laughs> 15 total? 20 total. 20. 20 total will hit. Do you have a bless? I do have a bless. Between Inspire Courage and the bless, a 22 will critically hit. Ooh. Ooh. It is just a little hand. And that means that I just do what? You, do you roll the damage? Yeah. To do all of the calculations and then double the okay. whole thing. All right, so 12. Yeah, you baseball bat that hand wherever you want it to go, honestly. That's, it's a hand. You did 12 damage to a hand. <laughs> Gotta hand it to you. Uh, Man, gone. Yeah. Next. And uh, I guess is the other one within my reach? Uh, yes, they're in the okay. same square because they're both very small. They're oh, like okay. parts of the same body. They were all together at first. All right, so I like swing one, and I'm like, oh, and I kind of like do a little like, you know, flurry <laughs> with the <laughs> so sap. Just like, okay, let's see if we can do this again, and I'll just go for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. Yeah. I'm <laughs> awesome. Like, awesomeness <laughs> over here. We'll see what happens. Pure swashbuckler no, energy. That's gonna be a, a nine. Oh uh, yeah, nine's definitely yeah, not so. going to do it. Um, That's so, right. But in like that move, I kind of turned and I like pretend that I was intentional and like sort of stick it. <laughs> staring down at this hand, and this hand is writhing on the ground. It flips over, compresses all of its fingers, and flings itself up at you, launching itself towards your face. As it does, the rest of the top of this torso violently explodes <gasps> outward. The upper half of the body bursts, showering blood across MD, uh, all the way back to Trey, probably, across Keys, as fragments of this black leather from his attire go absolutely everywhere. And following behind that are writhing whip-like tendrils. As the animated entrails of this body lash and strike and grab out towards you. No, uh It's a great place to be. Firestones, we're having a wonderful time. It's a fun adventure. I need E's and MD to make me reflex saves. Oh. 24. Ooh. Dirty 20. <laughs> I forgot you were a rogue. 11, 11 on the die. Right, he does that. Um, and then nine more, so 20. The, you're both super dex characters. Yeah. Uh, as these lash and reach towards you, both of you Dodger. definitely got to hunt out of the representation. <laughs> no. We <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't want any of that action. No. <laughs> they are whip like and lashing, but they are almost sort of random. They're not flinging intelligently. 
and uh, simply stepping and ducking around them allows you to avoid getting pulled in as these lengths of intestine attempt to lash and wrap out around you. The hand, however, keys you're blessed. Take that back. Woo, Mr. Geez. T is going to fly up towards MD with... There's a cow. A, <laughs> a zombie cow. Oh, I what? Mean, cows have a lot of stomachs, so if we're dealing oh. with all oh, the gosh. organs, that's just more organs. Cow's <laughs> cow is actually the scariest <laughs> answer. Who? Well, I'll that. Point. Who no! I mean, this is a good I'm place to spend it. A villain point. I don't want the tatter man using that. You're right. With a 24 to hit you. Good job. Uh, and you would all see this hand shoot up while you're dodging the entrails. Hand looks like it's going for your face. It shoots and latches onto your throat. The fingers punching into the sides of your neck like little claws. It doesn't do a ton of damage. Uh, you're going to take four points of slashing damage from them digging into you. But at the moment, you cannot speak. Oh. It's not so aggressive that you are like suffocating immediately it's just a hand grip on your in your throat but it's it, it's it's very difficult for you to get speech out um and then it's just attached to you it's just going to kind of clench and writhe and keep trying to dig and bury itself oh. in the sides of your neck with a 23 to hit good job Oh man! So supportive. And you were gonna take another. <laughs> you can see five, the fear in his head. <laughs> five points of slashing damage. But it is your turn now, good sir. I drop the stick, pull the dagger, and just do this motion. Ooh. All right, the attack roll. For a total of a twenty-two with this plus one. Yeah, twenty-two. Uh, it's definitely flat-footed as it's like you know attached to your neck. That's going to critically hit. It's flat-footed because it's... <laughs> flat, you're, no, flat-handed, you're, sorry. <laughs> you're, fla- you're flanking it have. single-handedly. <laughs> yeah. You're on this side. It's flanked. <laughs> Literally Four, single-handedly. Eight, 13, 14, 28 damage. Kaboom. Oh, what? That's, I'm a rogue. No, that's a rogue that crit. That's a crit rogue. So... I- have oh one gosh. shot at higher levels while playing a rogue. You? If you get a sneak attack. What do you do? I literally just take the dagger, drive it in full force with enough control, stopping myself before it punctures my own skin. Pull the hand up. Next. Well, next is probably the writhing entrail pile. Next. Okay. Um, <laughs> next. <laughs> We're just gonna, I'm just going at it at this point. Pin on the die. 13. 14 total. Um, 14 will hit. Seven damage, eight damage. And uh, eight points of damage, you start to slash down at it. Uh, A human body only has so many intestines uh, and you cut through. They are no more resilient than they otherwise would be. This is in fact even easier than plunging it through the hand. You slice through a number of them, but there are still some remaining whipping and lashing out at you. They appear to have ripped themselves apart, making several strands out of each of these as they swing your direction. You have one action left. Um, I'm just gonna cool myself off and move backwards. Fair enough. Get a little bit of space. And that will bring us to Trey. Who's gonna walk right up to the entrails with his big old improvised piece of metal on his arm and clunk, slam it down. Any attack roll. We are power shield bash. Uh, power attack, shield bash. Trey's favorite Four. is can I cut this thing in half with a well, flipped object? <laughs> is that a nine or a two? That's a nine. I'll keep it. Um, that's an 18. 18 will hit. Yeah. And uh, uh, with the health that has remaining there's no way you could not. I'm assuming a D6 for a shield getting two-handed bash. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's got two else, yeah. so. <laughs> you, <laughs> I you, literally couldn't uh, not. You, you can't not kill it from yeah. this point. So what happens as you bring this down? I Well, he was nice enough to fillet the entrails, and I just mashed it out 
and you get a nice little squish mm-hmm. and blood goes everywhere. Fortunately, there's not a lot of blood left in it. And most of the way you're splashing is just what is already shot out from when the top half of this body just erupted like a pustule. Smashing it down those Trey and MD step in, put a swift stop to this between all of your efforts very quickly ended. Once again, the hall is as silent as it was before this corpse had animated. Except for the uh, little plucking of... Except for the little plucking of... <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's as silent as before. It's as silent as before. There's yeah. gentle, right. plucky violin music. Yeah. Now it's done with... I don't, the, we're beside the door now, right? Yeah, it's literally immediately next to Keys here. You, of course, also have the front will be close by. How you push it open? I'm starting to think we should burn bodies. Because if this could happen yeah. to anybody, dead, dead things it's are the bad. first one we've Life seen. Are bad. Yeah, we should start cremating. Uh-huh. It's the first one we've seen, though. What if that only happens to Ferasmans? We had a whole pile of bodies in the basement, and we didn't see a single one of these. I think that's an unfounded fair. As you're discussing and looking down at the body here, um, you can see much of what was past the rubble is now gone. Through the tatters of black leather and flesh, you can see the top of a small knapsack on one hip of this figure and the polished steel pummel of a blade on the other. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look in the little knapsack. As you reach down, I you're taking the sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The teeth of the blade is attached to belts on this body under a lot of stone. And very that doesn't well stop me stuck. from taking that the blade. That does not stop you from taking the sword <laughs> out. And a sword it is. As uh, with a metallic shink, you draw forth a blade. Maybe about an arm long, a short sword, an arming sword, certainly. Uh, not a long, like a primary sword, but one that is of fine steel and seeming well make. Uh, the blade shows no mars or damage from the immense amount of stone weighing down upon it and its sheath. And this is a functional and fully serviceable short sword. And the knapsack. You find a couple of things. You find a small tome, no bigger than an index card, uh, bound in gray leather, with again that spiral emblem on its front. If you flick through it at all, it clearly seems to be a book of psalms, uh, various devotions and chants of the Ferasmin faith. As well in the bag are two small sticks of incense, four silver pieces, a potion, which is a like a well-made glass flask, like a proper potion, something that looks well and true and drinkable. (laughs) Bright red (laughs) liquid with a big old plus on the side of it. (gasps) Another minor healing potion and an oddity, a Ooh. small green crystal, maybe the size of the top knuckle of your thumb, set into an iron setting, shaped also like a winding spiral with a clasp at its top. Hmm. Hmm. Now, interesting. Very interesting. You have on your uh, magical list of magical there. Mm. Miss Witch, a cantrip. Let me double check your file to see exactly which one it is. My file? I got a lot of cards going on over here. How much does it? It is called Read Aura. Read Aura, I do have that, I do have that. Now, there are a lot of various strange and magical things throughout the world of Pathfinder. Yes. And this is one of the first that we have come across. Uh, That spell allows you to quickly, with a cantrip, identify whether or not something is magical. Mm. And also just a little bit of information about what it might be. Uh, It also, ignore the horrible screaming. (laughs) We'll get to that that in a second. It also (laughs) 
<laughs> Look at that effect. My it also allows you to spend some time. It takes 10 minutes usually <clears throat> to use the magic of your read aura to attempt to unravel the enchantments or magic in an item and determine exactly what something does. Looking Ooh. at this, it looks odd. It looks possibly mag magical and a quick use of your cantrip would confirm that it is. And it has a very light aura of evocation shimmering around it. The school of magic dedicated to abjurations to the elements, uh, to the working of raw magical energy. It's a pocket fireball. That, that would be evocation, yes. Oh, necklace yeah. of fireballs, I kind of miss you, but also really don't. <laughs> but as you look through that, you do hear a scream come through the door next to you. Uh, what sounds like a male voice, scream of terror, followed by a single word repeated, Prize! Praise! I definitely, quickly stash my goods so that. I'm going to look at that later. The door. As you... Short sword in hand, because I haven't had time to figure out what to do with the open blade. Oh, Put your way in this room. You can see uh, an area that looks like a, a storage and drying area for the various linens and cloths of the facility. There's sturdy racks and toppled tables. Some affixed to the walls, some knocked askew, damaged, and destroyed. Uh, clearly, this place once served as a very sizable laundry facility. The northern end of the room where you come in here is still choked with rubble as much as the ceiling and northern wall seems to have given way. But there is a separation, this chamber, to the greater area of the room, and you can hear the voice coming from around that corner to your right, out just out of view. But from closer, you don't just hear this terrified screaming and this one word, praise, praise, over and over. You hear tearing and crunching as if something was being eaten back there. Something large. And that. No! No! <laughs> we went like 15 minutes over even. That ah! is where we will end today's story. I moved my little resting table a little bit. Oh no, it tipped over and everyone's at 10. <laughs> <laughs> I think the punish Derby right, yeah. should take sanity, like, stress away from him. <laughs> put it back on the rack. Like, no, 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 you're feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I think it is kind of funny. The guy who has spent a hero point to try to see what this does is tied for the most or the least stressed it's at the moment. Funny, the two guys who said they're gonna race yeah, to get to ten. We want you to get both to at ten. six. We have two at seven and one at eight. It none didn't of get you, any worse this time. None of you shook today. Today seems to have working uh, worked surprisingly well. It's been working. It's been working. It has working surprisingly well. Nobody Shaking. gave way to base instincts. Ooh. Nobody did anything out of their uh, out of their plan, out of their order, out of their desires. Maybe you're coming to grips with it. Maybe it was luck. Maybe, Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybelline. <laughs> we'll be back next week to see how it continues. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for joining us on our uh, April Fool's adventure with the stream blew up once. Thank you for putting through the uh, technical <laughs> issue of us having to restart our computer because everything fell apart. We're back next week at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern. I think we're on Eastern Daylight Time now because Daylight Savings Time happened and everything used to be as confusing as physically possible. We've got to make it hard. Enjoy the rest of your weekends, hopefully. We'll see you then. Good night, Bye. everybody.